What's up, everybody? Welcome to Streaming 101. Um, if, you, if you missed it before, we are recording this and we are going to definitely put this on YouTube. So if you do have to duck out, let's say at 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, doesn't matter. We are going to put it on YouTube. We're going to timestamp it on YouTube. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is DJ J. Um, this gorgeous gentleman beside me right here is, is DJ Epic. Uh, and fun fact, we went to junior kindergarten together. Yeah. And then, and then I moved and then we never talked for like 10 years and then we found each other again. And found out that we were both DJs. And, and, f- and found out we were both DJs. So that was the coolest part. Um, I don't really want to give a bio of me. I mean, most of y'all, uh, my MP3 pool editor, um, Twitch streamer. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Epic, that, epic, g- give about you. That's right. I mean, again, uh, just to go with what Jay said. Uh, yeah, I'm a Twitch streamer as well. I'm a DJ. I'm a graphic designer. Um, uh, I, I try to do everything that has to do with creative, but for the most part, um, trying to help as many DJs and as many uh, artists as possible with whatever skills um, that I, you know, that I could, that I could provide. So um, Jay, you want me to, you want me to get going on this? Yeah. So um, again, like I said, uh, we're going to start very basic and then move up our way from there. So the first thing we're going to start dealing with is computer requirements which I, yeah. is uh, so epic. If you want to pull that up on your screen yeah, now, I will and do then, that. Um, <clears throat> once we're done that, we'll answer uh, Shayla soul's question of, he wants to buy a new streaming computer. So we'll, we'll tie that. We'll tie, yeah, in we'll tie that question together. So yep. basically off the bat, so computer requirements, it's funny because everyone thinks that they need like this beastly computer to stream on Twitch. I mean, it'd be nice. Uh, It's not something that's available to all of us, or it's not something that we would think that we would require after uh, the Twitch stream stops. Um, You know, most, most people buy a a, a big beastly computer to also do other things like video editing, um, sound design, even producing or gaming, uh, which is what this guy does. And um, so that's why I had a computer at my disposal, but I'll show you the specs in a second. Uh, But before I do that, it's just in terms of computer requirements. So like you could have, you could have like a a much smaller scale computer, but you have to be careful, right? Like there's certain limitations to certain, certain devices, like a MacBook air might not be like, you know, a 2013 MacBook air might, might might not be the machine you want to use for Twitch streaming. Um, You know, your wife's work laptop that she got an IBM or something like that depending on the specs, it might not be the computer that you want to be using. Um, but there are certain computers like, you know, some, some, some of the Twitch streamers I know were using older MacBooks from like 2012, 2013, which are great DJ laptops, by the way, if you have a MacBook Pro. Um, as long as you like do your testing, do your due diligence and, and find that perfect like settings in OBS or like the, the perfect, you know, again, settings or like whatever devices that you guys are using, like your audio capture and your, and your video capture, as long as you're not overpowering it with so much stuff, you can get away with using an older computer to Twitch stream, but you just have to know its limitations. You have to understand that it may, it may not let you do a video set, like a video music video set, or it may not let you put in all those widgets, like how Jay has like emotes, like flying across the screen and stuff like that, or potentially you might not even be able to use a green screen. So like, think about things like that. But prioritize, at the end of the day, we're DJs, right? So prioritize what's most important. Audio, number one. Um, And then, you know, some sort of video stream. um, And all the other stuff is extra, if you can fit it in. So I'm just going to show you quickly um, what my setup looks like. Um, Jay's is not too far off, if I'm being honest. Um, Hold on, let me go back. So... Um, let me know in the chat if you can't see it, but if you can, it's fine. I'll just explain it. But if you can't see anything, just let me know and I'll re, uh, explain it. So the number one thing in terms of your streaming computer is internet. So I'm going to get into internet a little bit later, but, um, here's my streaming computer. It's actually quite old. Um, I bought this, this gaming computer and I built it myself like about seven, seven, eight years ago. Um, but it still, still holds true. So these are the specs right here. 
Um, the main spec that you'll notice are these two things is the Asus, the RTX 2070. That's the graphics card. And you have the a 16 L gig graphics card. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Bro. How, how else am I supposed I'm, to play I'm sitting at Call three. of Duty Warzone? I'm sitting at three. <laughs> How else am I supposed to play Call of Duty That's Warzone, insane. bro? That's insane. I didn't even and know that. And so the, the big piece here is the, is the one that some of you may not have is the Elgato, uh, the capture card. So the capture card is super important for using like, a, like a, a camera, like a GoPro or a DSLR camera. If you have like ones lying around that you took on like that Europe trip that you went to with your wife or your girl or your family, um, you could use like those kind of cameras for as your webcam for live streaming not all of them work so don't get me wrong uh, but you can post in the chat which camera you have and if you can i can let you know whether it works or not um so basically that that covers the streaming computer itself yes it is quite quite beastly uh, but it's something i had lying around from before when i was gaming this is like pre-covid lying just lying around stop just this stop in the this corner, lying around <laughs> uh gopro hero 6 works perfectly um, and I'll explain that later, uh, later in the show, like, or the webinar, sorry, um, about how getting that set up, if you haven't got it set up already. So Jay, Jay, you said you were going to talk about internet, right? So I'll talk about yep. that a little bit later. Um, so I have a GoPro hero eight, um, again, a camera that I got, you know, that I was going to, I'm supposed to be in Bali actually right now. Um, and I can't fly obviously. And we all know why and everyone else, I'm sure you guys had trips planned. Um, so I'm using the gear, GoPro hero eight and I have it. HDMI hooked up to my computer and then the audio source, which we'll talk about later. Um, I use a DDJ 1000 SRT as my controller for my DJing. And then something we'll talk about a little bit later as well is the yellow duck. So this is what people were asking in terms of how do you get your Instagram set up while you're streaming on Twitch? Um, but just to quickly end this off in terms of the streaming computer, what you need to do is you need to find the machine that you're going to that you're going to stream with and you need to basically test it and you need to test and test and test. You need to like start either start from the top. This is what I did. I pushed it as high as possible. Um, and then I worked my way down until there was a sweet spot and you have, you just have to do that. And we can, we'll teach you how to do that. Uh, we're going to talk about Twitch inspector. There's a whole bunch of things you can do in Streamlabs or OBS. Um, to make sure that you have the right settings before you go live. Cause there's no, nobody here wants to go live and their computer starts to crap out. Um, I'm an advocate there, for that. Yeah. hundred percent, bro. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if we're talking about yeah. sound cards, yeah. uh, Jay, Jay will tell you a funny story about that. But if you guys have any questions about what I just talked about, um, please ask those. But the key um, thing is, sorry to cut you off. I think the key thing is, no, is, you're good. is test. Because everyone has a different computer that they stream with. The key word is test because there is no right answer there. Like, uh, like I talked to some people who have older computers who have not one issue. And then I talked to people who have newer computers, tons of issues. Right. The key thing is you need to test. And like, and like Epic said, either I start slow, like I started slow and then work my way up or what Epic said is start really big, put everything all at once and then work your way back down. But the key thing yeah. is test. There is no right answer for anyone because we all, every single person have a different um, streaming laptop. Right. And the priority is obviously audio. We are DJs. We are mixing audio. Like make sure that by all means that everything is good on that front before you go anywhere else. Um, because you could put up like a, a canned video of something or you could put up an image of something, but like if you're, if your audio is not working or you're prioritizing the, your video or your camera stream before that, like there's no point. Um, but again, like, like you said, test, test like crazy. Um, and if there's any, anyone that has a machine that they, they want to know whether if it could work or not, like by all means, send that in the chat, send me like the specs of the machine. Um, and you know, while Jay is talking about something else or uh, whatever it is, I can, I can message you on the side and let you guys know. But, uh, yeah, so this is my setup. If you guys want to take a screenshot real quick before I put it down, by all means do that. Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about, it's funny because I'll segue it now. We're going to talk about cameras. We're going to talk about audio sources and inputs. We're going to talk about, uh, the internet that's required, the minimum requirement, believe it or not, there is one. Uh, we're going to talk about Yellow Duck and Instagram, and obviously we're going to talk about Streamlabs um, and Twitch. And uh, Jay, why don't you take it over from here? 
So internet, um, what I have found uh, with, with the hundreds, and, and I'm not exaggerating there by any means, hundreds of calls I've got from multiple DJs, I would say you need to start with the internet because you could have the best computer ever, but if you only have um, a, a, a small internet upload speed, um, it's going to stop right then and there. So I really highly recommend a 20 upload speed and up. And the reason why is because it allows you to do a bit more things. Um, what does that mean if you have less? It just means you can only do less. Um, maybe that means you don't have flying emotes. Maybe that means you don't have green screen. Maybe that means you don't have multiple cameras. Um, maybe that means you don't even have an overlay. And we're going to get into all that um, in a bit. But maybe it just means it's you on camera with your DJ logo. But the key thing is, is you need to test. I recommend everyone have a burner account, um, which is a test Twitch account that you can go live and you, you know, your followers won't see you going live and it allows you to test and you go on your phone and you really watch your stream. Um, I recommend doing it for five to 10 minutes and see how your internet and how your computer and how everything else handles your stream. That being said, I have talked to DJs who have less than 10 megabits per second upload. And legit, the, the upload speed is really what matters. If you have less than 10, I'm not saying you can't do it, but everyone I've talked to has really, really struggled. So I really highly recommend if you really want to do this, you got to have more than 10. The way you find out, you go to Google on the computer that you're connected to right now, type internet speed test and you do one. And for real, if, if you want, do that right now and put your upload speed in the chat. Um, yeah, speed one test th on that. That's it. One thing I've noticed is Bell Internet is awesome with upload speed. So if you have Bell, you are most likely okay. Even, even a moderate Bell speed of 150 down still gives you 150 up, which That's is great. way more than I have. Um, I have, funny enough, what, what Epic posted on, on his thing, the Rogers, which is the Rogers Gigabit. And although I have one gigabit down, which is honestly stupid fast download, um, 30 up. Uh, anyone that has seen my stream um, knows I can throw video, I can throw audio, I can throw emotes, I can do a lot of things with it. So um, mm -hmm. 30 is a great r place to, you know, um, a comfortable place that you can do a lot of things. Uh, multiple video, music videos, moving backgrounds, yeah. stuff like that. I see DJ Vibe is 18. Um, again, if you're just under 20, I just really, really recommend just testing. And again, what, what, what testing means is you put your camera and your logo, see what that does. Then you maybe make your camera smaller and you maybe put a moving background. Um, you can grab one from YouTube. You can do a lot of things, even a movie, even if you have a movie downloaded on your computer, you could technically load it. Um, yeah. and just, to, just to test, see what happens. But the key thing is, is testing. Um, Arctic, you got to have more than four. <laughs> and Jay, hold on. Can I just chime in as well? It's like yep. um, when you're, when you use Twitch and your, your stream output on Twitch is for example, 3000 or 4,500 or 6,000, which is the max on Twitch. That's, that's using your upload speed. So if you have 20 and you're sending 6,000 kilobits per second to Twitch, it's using part of your upload speed, which means you have 24 left, but that, like if, if, if you have 30 or sorry, if you had 20, whatever, you have 14 left, but that doesn't mean anything because you're, you might have people using Netflix at the same time, or there you have other devices using data. So you have to be careful how you utilize that 20. Cause it's not a full 20 uh, because you have network sources in your house. Like, you know, you might have a Google home or a nest or something. They're all using your internet at the same time. A, a perfect um, example for me is yeah. I have the nest webcam, uh, the, the nest cams, which are the security cameras. I actually, funny enough, um, all some of my internal ones, I actually turn them off uh, when I stream just to make sure that I actually have that extra bandwidth in case I want to do some crazy videos and, and crazy backgrounds like that. So again, if you do, I, I am seeing some lower ones, 10, 8. Again, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you can't do it. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that you need to test it and maybe you need to have a smaller video. Maybe you need to mess with your video bitrate, which again, we're gonna run through. I'm, I'm gonna go through all the settings um, in OBS. Epic's gonna go through all of his settings and we're gonna show you exactly how to calibrate when you go live to make sure that you don't have those issues. Right. 
Um, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of good upload speeds here. You guys are fine. Most, like, I don't, haven't seen anyone that, aside from Arctic, I'm not sure if he's joking. <laughs> but I, I think, I feel like you guys are mostly fine. But again, what Jay said about the cameras, if you have one of those lower ones, like where it's at 10, um, you know, be wary about what other devices are being used in your house while you're streaming. Like it, I don't think it hurts to, to turn something off for two hours or three hours or four hours like Jay went last <laughs> night. Um, <laughs> But, you know, just keep in mind, these are the, it's funny, right? Because when you're DJing in a club, there's not a lot of things you have to think about, right? There's a, we all know what we have to think about when you're at a club, but when you're streaming, it's a whole next level. There's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do um, and you have to think about before, you know, if you want to have a success, successful stream, right? Eventually get partner maybe or be an affiliate. Epic. Before we move on, um, yeah. Shayla Sol, we, we didn't touch on his question. Um, he's looking to buy a new streaming computer. Cool. So right before we keep going, anyone that's looking to buy a new streaming computer, um, mm -hmm. let's, let's touch on that. I'll yeah. give you my opinion, then Epic will give you his opinion. My opinion is you find a used old gaming computer, 2012 and up, and mm -hmm. legit, if you look on Kijiji, I mean, depending on obviously where you are, I really recommend something in the range of 400 to $600. You really don't need to spend more than that mm -hmm. because – you're buying something, although used, something that, again, is probably better than what you're currently using. Um, you I, I recommend a dedicated graphics card of one gig 100%, and up. 100%. Uh, and, and again, uh, 16 gigs of RAM helps. SSD helps. Um, <laughs> I know Smooth. I know Smooth be using a Mac. Um, again, there's no, no issue with using a Mac. Um, yeah. but, uh, but again... Any anyone that is really get, wants to get into streaming, I recommend something in between the ranges of four hundred, six hundred dollars. Use gaming computer. You can probably pick it up from some kid whose parents just bought him a new gaming computer to play the newest high intensity game, and is probably looking to get rid of it for mad cheap. and And I I highly recommend it because yeah. you don't need a lot. You don't. But at the end of the day, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do music videos, if you want a moving background, meaning you're DJing and there's a moving background behind you, um, if you want green screen, if you want flying emotes, I recommend you've got to figure out what you want. If you want everything, then I really recommend going with the, with the used yeah. gaming computer. If you don't, if you're just like, yo, I'm a simple DJ, I just want to play music, come on the screen, uh, pause. <laughs> 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 um, it, it's okay. It, it, it legit is okay. Um, it's just that you just know exactly what you want. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what you want, then I would say error, uh, error on the side of caution and try to get, um, a used older gaming computer from some punk kid who legit wants to get rid of it. Cause he needs the newest stuff. And, and it's Epic. funny you say that because I have, like, I showed you guys my specs and even though I built that computer seven years ago, and I upgraded the graphics card or whatever, but that's just because I wanted to play gaming, uh, some games or whatever. But I'm like a simple DJ. Like Jay has, Jay's going to show you. He has a bunch of stuff. And like, I'm the more, even though I have like a pretty beastly machine, I, I don't use, I don't utilize it. Um, which, so that's a testament to what Jay is saying is that you don't really need something that's that crazy. Um, and, but, but again, just to make sure his point came across, you need a dedicated graphics card. That's like a hundred percent. Um, cause if you don't have that, then that's where all like the video encoding, and I'm not trying to get too technical, but that's, that's, what's really putting your video and your OBS stream onto Twitch. That's the, one of the most important things. Um, so dedicated graphics card, hundred percent. And then we're going to show um, you actually how to, um, assign certain devices that they only use the graphics card, which again, takes mm -hmm. a load off of your PC or Mac. It just takes a load off of, of, of the computer. That way, you, um, your computer's not freezing up and the graphics card uh, takes the brunt of the force of, uh, of, of yeah. the video uh, processing. Exactly. So, it will also show you how to show, like there in OBS, there's a way to show a status bar where you can see like while you're streaming, you could see like how intensive your computer or your GPU, like your graphics card is like being like used for while you're streaming. So like, that's important to know, right? Like there was one time, so here's a quick story before we, we move on. I was using my, my MacBook to stream when we first started Twitch because I, was, I wasn't sure um, what we, like I, I was streaming on Twitch, but for my Xbox, like doing some gaming stuff, but in terms of DJing, it was different. So I used my MacBook and I found that at one point when I was streaming, when I got into like the third, just past the second hour, uh, 
the PC, the CPU percentage went up to like 70%. And the thing sounded like it was about to take off from Pearson airport. So like you have to like always monitor and just make sure. Um, and OBS gives you those tools uh, to do that. Um, but yeah, in terms of, I hope Jay, I hope that that answers your question. If you want to get more in depth, I mean, by all means, you can message me on Instagram um, and we can actually talk about building a PC if you want, but I know you said Kijiji just quickly, like Facebook marketplace is huge. Yep. Uh, people are selling gaming PCs all over that place. So check Facebook marketplace. And again, this is not something you need to spend a lot of money on. You, you, no. And again, I, I really recommend old. You do not want something that's 2018, 2019, because the price will reflect that. A 2018, 2019 gaming computer will be in the range of $1,000 plus. Okay. If you got the money, go ahead and do it. But I'm, I, I really recommend something older um, that will, again, still, again, do what you need it to do. Um, but again, you don't need to go crazy. Right. And just to answer Storm's question real quick, uh, the max usage, your CPU should never exceed more than 15 to 20%. When you're, when you're streaming, cause it's all on the graphics card. Um, you know, there are a few things that are being loaded, like the emoji stuff, like even though that's being encoded into video that it's still loading from the chat, there is some C CPU processing there, but again, I'm not trying to get too technical, but like there, it shouldn't exceed 20%. And we're, again, we're going to show you, we're going to show you how to, uh, to assign everything to the graphics card, um, and stuff like that. Um, a ton of questions about. OBS, OBS Live, Slobs. Um, I think we're pretty much at that point, Epic, mm -hmm. that uh, we want to dive into that before we get into um, the dirt. Tonight, tonight's uh, webinar is going to be predominantly Slobs, which is Streamlabs OBS. I use it. That's what Epic uses. Um, we will explain the other pieces of software you can use. Um, but tonight will be pretty much dedicated to Streamlabs OBS. Um, here's the best part. All of the other OBSs work extremely similar to what we're going to do. So if you're using something else, it's all good. You don't need to use what we use. But I, I just, I really like the way Streamlabs works. Um, and, and not to get too technical without going into in, in detail, but I really like all of the widgets and all of the special features that Streamlabs offers versus some of the other ones where you have to do, again, nothing, there's nothing you can do in Streamlabs that you can't do in anything else, but the other ones, you're going to have to put in a tiny bit more work into going into um, other websites and, 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 and taking other widgets and adding them in. And again, if you don't know what that means, we were going to go into that um, in depth but I really recommend uh, Streamlabs OBS because it is kind of a, a one-stop shop for everything you need. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Right? So that is legit the difference. Streamlabs OBS, to answer the, the question, Streamlabs OBS is your one-stop shop for everything, including streaming, including widgets, including everything like that. Not to say that the other ones are bad. It's just that the other ones – some of the of uh, the widgets, some of the special effects that you want, you're going to have to work a tiny bit harder to get them into it. Not that you can't, it's just you got to work a tiny bit harder where Streamlabs makes it extremely easy. And we're going to explain that uh, to, to uh, once we get into it. So Stoibo, I hope that answers your question. Um, once we get into it, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to explain more, but um, just for anyone that is maybe even deciding what they're going to be using even before we go on the stream, I recommend Slobs, Streamlabs OBS. Um, there is OBS Studio, which is, um, I, I, would say the, I would say, the most popular one online right now. And then there's something called OBS Live, which is done through Stream Elements, which is another online website. But like I said, they all work pretty much the same. And the tips we're going to give you work across all platforms. So don't worry if you don't have those, the, the Streamlabs we're using. We're going to kind of uh, do a blanket statement. All right, so we'll answer that. Um, crap, we missed. So audio. Yeah. Um, Epic, what do you use for audio? How yeah, do you get so, the audio to, to your computer? Yeah, so from my diagram, I have, um, I have a Rodecaster Pro, uh, which I got lucky. I got to, Fancy. I got to, I got to borrow from work. Uh, it's now <laughs> mine. Um, <laughs> I don't think they'll ever need it again. I hope they're not watching this. They're not watching this. 
<laughs> and uh, it's it's basically a podcast mixer mixer, and it has XLR inputs in it, which is great. So I can actually separate. I can do stereo master from my SRT, and then I can hook in a mic uh, into that as well. So that if I wanted to record my mixes, I can separate the mic from uh, my mixes if I want to record in Serato. But um, as Storm actually asked a great question in the chat, and I answered it, but I'm going to answer it um, through voice. You could also, for some mixers and controllers, you could actually use internal audio um, from your Mac settings. So if you go to Mac settings, if you go to volume, or sorry, your sound settings, and then you go to output, if your controller is connected through USB and it's on and you use your DJ laptop as your streaming laptop, um, you could, you could output your audio that way. But you know, I use a separate computer as you guys saw. And, uh, yeah, I use the roadcaster pro and I had an iRig and I have, I have an iRig it's sitting here. Um, which is, which was also good for me as well. So Epic has really fancy like it doesn't, I don't think it gets better than what he has Maybe. Uh, to, to be honest. Um, I use a sound card. Uh, I have a focus, right. And I know, I know Stoivo asked, um, audio inputs, why focus right versus line in on your lap, uh, on your computer. Um, I find the focus right and any sound card doesn't have to be focus right. Any sound card um, just provides a bit more, I want to say detailed audio, I'll, I'll say, compared to a line in. A line in is just the cable in. Um, I think it really matters if you're using that and your cable is, let's say, an Amazon basic cable that doesn't have a lot of shielding. You may get um, some weird audio, some weird um interference noise so i really highly recommend even a cheap sound card but just a sound card that takes sound either from an xlr a quarter inch a mini eight it doesn't matter and puts it usb into your computer not to say that there's nothing wrong anything wrong with going line in but i i promise you um having a uh, having a sound card versus line in the sound card will win every time yeah and the reason why is because the sound card actually, and some of them are very expensive. Don't get me wrong, but you can get some that are actually pretty cost effective that, you know, it's not something that you're going to, you're not going to use after you're done streaming. Like you will use these sound cards. I'm telling you, um, you know, it's great for like music production and recording and all that as well. But the reason why they sound so much better than line in is because they actually have like a pro like processing in the sound card. So they they'll take your audio and they'll, using hardware and software will make it sound better. Um, and that's, that's more than a DJ can ask for. Let me tell you. Um, so yeah. So like my roadcaster pro is made for podcasting. So it's generally made for mostly for, for like voice. Uh, but they have some setting, it has some setting on, on it for music as well. Cause some podcasts have music or whatever. Um, but for what Jay's saying, he has the focus, right? That thing is amazing. Uh, it's a great little machine and, and you can get like a two channel one. You get a one channel one, even if you really don't have to worry about it, if you want to go mono, uh, and you, it's, yeah, you, it sounds not amazing, new. not new, especially again, I like uh, Epic has it really fancy. I, I, I like to think my, my sound card is fairly fancy as well, but I use it on a daily basis. Cause that's kind of my day job. Um, you don't need that. You could like, like Epic said, have the, um, have the iRig. Um, and, and again, even if you wanted to spend a Super tiny bit simple. more money and go with the iRig, um, was the iRig pro that allows pro, you to go yeah. USB into the computer. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but again, if you do want some really, really crystal clear audio, uh, with processing on it, I really recommend a sound card it does not have to be anything that we have, but a sound card, um, is highly, highly recommended. Yeah. And, and as again, long as it's USB. Because yeah, that's, it, that's the way you'll connect it to OBS. And it gives you a ton of control after the fact, right? So, so th th that's another benefit to it as well. Your line in is just, that's what it is. There is no processing on it. It's from your mixer cable to your line in cable. That's all, that's all it is. Where, the, um, where your sound card, no matter how expensive or cheap it is, has in a sense a, a CPU and a brain inside of it that, that is going to be doing some, some processing on the audio. So... Uh, to answer that question, um, I really recommend sound card over line in. But again, some people that are using um, 2012 MacBooks, 2011 MacBooks, they have a line in there. There's nothing wrong with it. I just highly recommend if, yeah. you, if you really want really crystal clear audio, 
highly recommend going with the uh, with the with the sound card. I, I say we just jump right in. Epic. What do yeah, you think? Go f- yeah, hundred yeah, j- percent. Jump right in. Um, all right, so I am going to open up my uh, my stream labs, and I'm going to walk you through everything that I have um, going on. And then again, some some of it will will apply to you, some of it won't. And again, it doesn't matter if uh, if you don't have stream labs or not. I'm going to kind of touch on uh, a, a bit of everything. So, yeah, buckle up, Jay. Jay Jay's got a lot of stuff. You guys are in for a ride. It's like Wonderland. So when you download Streamlabs, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be a blank, extremely blank canvas. And that's the best part about the, these softwares. Again, if you've never used it. And, um, and again, we, we may be going very basic for some people. But again, I, in case anyone is, this is their first time, I really want to um, emphasize that this is a blank canvas. And think of this as your DJ mixer. You can add audio. You can add whatever you want. This is your mixer to, the, to Twitch. So again, um, the first thing you do is when you come over here, you have your mixer, which is all of your audio sources. You have your scenes, which are all of the uh, predetermined uh, clusters of sources. And then over here, we have sources. A source is your webcam, your audio, your uh, chat box, your overlay. I know some people were asking, what is an overlay? An overlay, which I will show you now, is this. It is a pre-designed graphic that gives you the name of the show, um, your, uh, your Twitch name, some of your social media, um, and allows you to have a window, which you can then add a webcam, a GoPro, whatever you want, into there, as you see there. Um, and how you do that is you come here, and again, doesn't matter what software you're using, you come to the sources area and you push add and it gives you all of these sources here image like i talked about is your overlay browser source is a web page image source again um, a series of images that you can have and that cycle through kind of like a powerpoint presentation uh display kind of like what we're doing now anything that shows on on this monitor will show in your display capture uh, game capture this is how you would add in your xbox or playstation 4 or 5 or whatever you have um, audio input. This is what gives you your audio um, input, whether that's your line in, whether that is your, gra- um, your sound card. Um, open VR, we, we will not touch on. Uh, scene, you can pre-save your scenes and add them in later. Audio output capture. Now, even though it's a very, very weird name, audio output capture is your, uh, your desktop audio. Meaning, if you're watching a video and you want your video to, to, to the sound to play in your stream, you need to do an output. As weird as it sounds, it is your desktop audio. Your video capture device, that is your webcam. That is your GoPro. That is your capture card. Uh, window capture is kind of like the display capture, but the window capture is a predetermined window that you decide that to show. So if I only want to show my Streamlabs or if I only want to show one website, versus my whole desktop, I would use a window capture. Uh, text GDI. This is if you want to add text. Let's say you're not a graphic designer like, like Epic. You can add text so that way when you see all this stuff and, and you're not a graphic designer and you don't have someone design this for you, you can add all this yourself. The cool part about the GDI Plus is you can actually add motion and other effects to the, to the text itself. A media source. This is where you have your uh, videos and um, pretty much anything that, that that's media related. If you want to, if you want to have a soundtrack while you're playing, that that's how you would do that. And then a color source is literally a colored box that you can add anywhere um, to to use as a background. And and I and I can actually show you, um, which is where is it? Uh, this color source right here. So I I put this here, and then I have a follower goal. And 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 if, if you see, if I remove the color source, um, it's not as easy to read. So that's what the color source does. So again, uh, the DJ booth is my audio, uh, audio device. My follower goal is a widget. My color source uh, is this box right here. I can take the follower goal off. That's that box there. Um, my big chat window is a widget we can get into later. Um, my video overlay is this piece right here. And, and as you see, if, once I remove it, um, that all goes away. Um, and my GoPro is here, uh, which again is your camera. 
Um, these are all sources. These are scenes. Scenes are a cluster of sources. So um, here I have a, a pre-show. Um, my pre-show here is just uh, an image with a video that is a media source, right? So um, while before my show starts, um, this is what plays and people can, you know, come and build the room. Um, as soon as I'm ready to go, I click this one, which brings it here. Um, I, uh, sometimes for this show, I play music videos, which we can get into later, but this allows me to have two video windows. So I have my window here and then I don't know if you can see this box here, but this box allows me to add a, a, a second window, which where, which where the, uh, the music videos would go. Um, so you got, the, you got the, the scenes portion. And then over here is the mixer, meaning any source you add that has a potential audio source, whether that be a camera, whether that be um, a media source, whether that be a website, they all have predetermined mixer, meaning um, if you want to be able to turn your DJ booth down, and your computer audio up, you can do that. You don't need a separate mixer to do that. Everything is done right in here. Epic, you want you want to show yours? I I, I think mine is sure. Yeah, hold on. Before you stop sharing though, let's just yeah. let's just take a look. Okay, all, like all the DJs in here, just just see how organized Jay is. Like you can add so many different sources, and it's you start to get lost in the sauce. You feel me? Like make sure you name your stuff because once you start creating multiple scenes, you have multiple shows things can get kind of dicey and you have to add like all these different sources for all your various shows. So what Jay is doing is amazing. It's keeping it very organized. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, and yeah, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll show mine. And, and, and so, and so right, right before you do that, um, the key thing is, is all of your sources remain in all of the, uh, all of the scenes. Meaning um, as you see here, when I go here, I have um, a big chat box. If I were, wanted the big chat box here, I can literally come here, um, go to chat box. And when I add, there is something already there called big chat box. So um, what Epic was saying is, is how detailed I am. It's just that, so I don't have to keep adding new things. If, if you really label them, you can see, oh, I need a big chat box. That's that one. If I need a small chat box, it's that one. So exactly. when you label your sources really, really well, um, it allows you to add more uh, to multiple scenes. Yeah. Okay. So let me share mine real quick. Mine's a lot simpler than what Jay has. Like, I mean, like tenfold. Um, let me just. How about I just do my whole screen? Okay. So here, here we go. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna explain a few things actually, and just get a little bit more in the nitty gritty. So here's mine. Um. You'll notice, you know, I'm not going to explain exactly what he, but what Stoivo mentioned in the chat was that Jay has his layout a bit different. And so does like his mixer was on the left um, and his scenes were in the middle and his sources were on the right. So, you know, you could, you could, however comfortable you need to be to make sure that this is set up for you, you set that up in that way. So I have my scenes on the left side. I have my sources in the middle and my mixers on the right. Um, and so he's, he only had his DJ booth. So there's a reason why mine has an alert box. When you get like a new follower or bits or subscribe, um, there is a little bit of like an audio chime that plays. So, you know, I don't actually mind that in my mixes. So like I, I put that in there. So in the mixes, I, I have that volume level there. It's a bit lower than my main volume, but it's there. So if someone follows me, there's like a little bit of a chime and you can customize all that. Um, so just quickly, uh, I need to mention a few things. So when it comes to audio and video, um, some of you have asked me, how come my audio is quicker than my video or vice versa? How come my audio is, is happening before like it, it actually happens on screen? So like if I'm talking on the mic and I'm like, um, what's going on or thanks for the follow. And then afterwards, my, my mouth says it, but the audio already happened. So there's a way to fix that. So if you go to your mixer and you go to your advanced audio settings right here, uh, I'm not sure actually if you can see this. Hold on. I can, can see you see it. Can, oh, you can see it. Okay, yeah, I, can, I, I can see it. So I'm, I'm sure everyone, everyone can see that. Okay. So if you go to your advanced audio settings, you'll notice uh, a few columns here. So the first column is the volume, but you can adjust that in the mixer at the bottom with the slider. Um, but the main thing that you need to understand here is the sync offset. So this is basically a video and audio sync and it's in milliseconds. Um, so I noticed that my audio was slightly faster 
um, or sorry, it, yeah, it was happening after it happened in the video. So I had to adjust this value. So I started at like 300 milliseconds and then I found it was too late. And then I got it down to finally a hundred and it matched perfectly. Like, I mean, when you watch my Twitch stream and I say the word boom, like it actually says the word boom perfectly on the stream and the audio and the video mix perfectly. Um, so make sure you guys think about this because I've seen a few streams where the audio is a bit late. And then if some of you don't understand that that's what's happening, this is where you need to fix it. So let me just do this one more time. You, you'll notice your audio mixer in Streamlabs. You go to your advanced audio settings and then you find where your audio capture is, not your video. Um, I think you can do it the other way, but I've only done it this way. So I'm not going to confirm that. But I, my Rodecaster Pro is my USB audio card. Um, and I, and I set it to a hundred millisecond, um, offset so that, um, so that it's, it syncs properly on Twitch, but don't, don't be confused. Cause like when you're streaming and you'll notice on your own computer that it's a bit lagged, it's always going to be a bit lagged. But what that offset is doing is it's making sure that whoever's watching your Twitch sees it perfectly fine. So don't worry about how your video is looking. Cause it's going to be a bit lagged from what you're doing in person to what's showing up on your streaming computer to what's showing up on your final Twitch. So yeah, if you have any questions about that, then let me know. Um, I want to I, I go back. Once, are, are, you, are you finished? Sorry. I, I don't uh, yeah. I'm just, I was just going to show a few more things and then. And oh, then cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. So just to show, I'm just going to turn everything off. Um, mine even though it's a bit more simpler than what Jay has, mine's a, a li slightly um, different because I have a video background without a green screen behind me. You guys can see behind my camera. Um, let me just get my camera back on. I have no green screen. Like this is all real. This is my basement. Um, so just to show you something that I quickly did is this is what my overlay actually looks like. Um, so I created this myself. I do design. So if you need any help with design, just let me know. Um, but the reason why I had to do this is because I'm, I'm sure most of you know about, uh, PNG files. They're like transparent graphic files. Uh, you might get your logo in that file, or you might have a few things in that file in that file format, but with a video, you cannot have a PNG. It's impossible because PNGs are still images. They are not videos. So in some cases, you might need to use this fake green screen. And Jay's going to show you a real green screen. Um, so you'll understand this concept. I know I'm complicating it a little bit. Um, but for those who understand, I'm, 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 I'm hoping this helps a little bit. But you, I'm basically using a fake green screen here in order for me to have a video background. Um, and then once I use the green screen filter, which is called chroma key, and we'll talk about that in a second, that green that I put here in this video disappears. And it allows me to use my GoPro camera, which is in behind um, so that I can have a fully automated or fully like movable animated um, screen. So yeah, that's just one little difference that I wanted to show you guys um, before we go. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a quick little turnaround or like a workaround, but it, um, if you guys obviously just message me on Instagram or email me and I can explain it to you, but um, I don't really have much more than that. Like I have a chat and I have a viewer count to show how many people are viewing my live at the same time. And I have an alert box. Um, let me just show that real quick and you can test them. So if someone follows me, it looks like, uh, it's not showing up or something. Oh, because I hit it. Okay. So if I do the tests, Sorry, Jay, just give me one more second. No problem. You can actually no test problem. all this stuff. And, and like Jay, like we were saying before, test everything before you go live because you don't want any surprises. So yeah, if someone follows me, it does that. Now, I didn't make this animation. This this came from Streamlabs. Um, I wish, like, I like I, I think I'm capable of doing something like that, but but it's it, sure it would take me a long time. Um, so quickly before I hand it off to Jay, I'm going to show you how I got that. Um, and basically what you can do is you can go to Streamlabs. Let's see, where is it? Oh, it's up here. So you'll see like the app store and it's kind of like the Apple app store, like an iPhone. Um, and they, there's a bunch of stuff that's at your disposal. Now I'm not sure if you need a subscription for some of these, um, but they have like overlay stuff that you can download. 
sorry, it's not the app store. It's the themes. It's right above the app store. Um, and if you go to themes, you can go to widget themes, which is right here. And it I has even went here before. Yeah, I bro. I'm, I'm, t I'm telling you this is, and it's all, some of it should be free. Um, yeah. and these are widget themes. So basically if someone follows you, if someone subscribes to you, if someone sends bits, um, you can have like these, these already predetermined designed widgets and someone else has done it. You just need to download it into your, into your stream labs. Um, and you could, and you can choose it. So like the one that I had, I did not create, even though I created like the overlay and all that, the one I had was straight from this themes, um, part of Streamlabs. So like, that's why I actually like Streamlabs. This is why we explained we like Streamlabs more than OBS because OBS is like super nitty gritty. Like just, you have to kind of know what you're doing. One, two, it doesn't give you like these, these extra, and I'm sure it does in some capacity, but not like this where you can just easily download it into the software. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, yeah, like use this to your disposal if it's free. Um, I, I don't remember paying for any of this or having some sort of, um, subscription. So I'm pretty sure this is free to use. Um, they even have some scene stuff, but it's a lot of gaming stuff. So it's really hard to set up for DJing. Um, so I don't know if you, if you want to dabble into it, by all means, go ahead. And, 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 and actually, um, what, what, yeah. what Arctic just said, uh, matters as well. If you have a Amazon prime account, Yes. And you link your prime to your Twitch. It, it also opens up some free stuff like, like Epic was just talking about um, that, that again, you don't have to pay for. Um, but again, because you have a prime account, it gets linked together, which then you get some extra content as well. So um, this is the performance metric. So what you could do is you could actually like turn this on and off. It provides you with the frames per second. So if you are using a camera that's capable of 30 frames or 60 frames, you can, you can see like while you're streaming, if this drops and if you know it drops that, that means that there's something happening. So you can be wary of it. And it's currently showing me that I'm using 8% of my CPU because I have the zoom call going on and I have my stream labs going on. Um, but like I mentioned earlier in the webinar, like if you're, if you're around 20%, it's still fine. If it's going above 30, 40, 50%, you sh there should be some, you know, uh, concern there and then drop frames. This is going to happen to everybody. It happens to me too. Even though I have a beastly computer, you may get one or two randomly dropped frames. That's fine. But if you're getting dropped frames upwards of 10 or 15, that means your music is skipping or your, and your video is skipping or both. Um, and that's something to keep in mind. And then there's a bandwidth monitor as well. That just shows, um, mine's my bandwidth is 6,000. That just shows like what your actual bandwidth is. It's not always going to be at the highest that you set up. It's going to fluctuate, but as long as it's within 100 or 200, um, you know that your computer is performing well. But it's really important to know your performance while you're streaming. Epic did it a bit different way, but again, keep in mind, Epic has a beast of a computer. Um, like I said, here is your scenes. So a scene is a cluster of sources. I also have multiple shows. And in order to keep my CPU at bay and my graphics card at bay, I actually have multiple uh, clusters of scenes. So this is my new Rita Monday show. So every scene you see here is for my new Rita Monday show. But I know some people were asking, well, what about my fromage show? So when I click um, the fromage show, as you see, it's going to be loading right now. Um, and now it's going to bring up all my scenes from a completely different show. So as you see here, I have my, my intro scene, then I have this, this scene here, and then I have multiple scenes as well. And I highly recommend you do that. Um, even with, again, I have a, I want to say a decent computer, uh, a, a decent gaming computer. But again, what this allows you to do is it, it makes your uh, CPU not work as hard, makes your graphics card not work as hard, because you don't have all this media loaded to this scene. So I keep Every show I do, every different show I do, um, I keep it separate. Um, and, and as you see here, uh, I have multiple sources um, within every one. And again, keep in mind, if, if I were just to have um, a couple with Fromage and then a couple with New Rhythm Mondays and a couple with my other show, Yacht Life Thursdays, and a couple with my other one, um, all of that media would all be running at the same time. And again, even me having an awesome computer, my computer will bog down. It, it, it will happen. So I really, really recommend um, you come over here and you manage all and you can literally have scene collections is what it's called. 
And as you see here, all of my shows have their own scene collections. So I highly, highly recommend yeah. that. Um, and Jay, Jay, while you're there, can you just, uh, yep. just dabble into the transitions? Because while you were changing your scenes, uh, the cool little transitions were happening. Yeah. So, so um, I, I got to give all the credit to Stoivo. Stoivo is the one that really dug into this. Um, I just kind of learned from him. Um, but but your, your scene transitions um, can be customized as well. Um, as, as you see here, you can make a new one or I have, I have some here. So let, let's make a new one. So the first thing you can name it. The second thing is, is what does it do? A cut scene is just going to be an instant cut. And the duration of that, dep depending on, on what you set that. Um, all the cool stuff I'm doing is, a, is motion. Um, there's a Luma wipe. And as soon as you get here, then you can actually think of it as a PowerPoint presentation. Just the way you transition between PowerPoint, think of it the exact same way. Um, you, you choose exactly what it does. So for example, we'll go linear top left and push done. And uh, here we go. We just made that. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So now when I do that, watch, right? It, it, it does that. And it swipes like that. Now, now, now that's really, really fast. So let's, let's make that, uh, let's make that 800 here. And again, when now, when we do that, it's going to be a, a lot, a lot slower now watch. So again, you can really, really mess with each individual uh, transition itself. Um, the cool one, which I think is, is awesome is the motion, which, which as you see, it kind of sucks everything out and then brings everything back in as you see here. And all it does is anything that's still in the scene kind of just moves around. And as you see there, and boom, I, and, and there I go again. So that's the cool part about the, uh, about the scenes uh, and the transition. So really, really uh, play with that. And again, it's a lot of testing. Um, and again, shout out Stoivo. He was the one that uh, really uh, dug in deep with the, with the Fromage show and, and allowed me to, uh, to get all these, uh, all these cool transitions. How did DJs get to play videos on Twitch? So this is kind of relevant because you were showing your layouts. Um, and we also talked about uh, CPU requirements. And then let's just talk about the practice because you do a music video show. Yep. Um, so yeah, if you want to just dabble into that as well. So... Um, with music videos, now we have to talk about your DJ laptop. Um, your DJ laptop really matters with music videos because that is where uh, your music videos are played from. Um, they're within Serato, whether you use Serato Video or whether you use Mixed Emergency, you need a decent DJ laptop. I have a 2015, and even my 2015, which is souped up to the max, still struggles. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, extremely struggles. And I have a dedicated graphics card on it, plus an onboard graphics card. Um, and it still, um, still struggles. Although you do see me do video shows, um, there is some struggle on it. So the first thing you need is a decent computer with, again, a decent DJ computer with a decent graphics card on board. Second thing you need is to output your video source. AKA when you start DJing with music videos, um, as soon as you open the music video, whether it be Serato DJ or Mix Emergency, a window pops up with where your music videos play. Um, when you plug the HDMI in or, or however you're going to do it, DVI, VGA, doesn't matter. However you output your video, um, you need to extend your desktop uh, just the exact same way as if you plugged an external monitor into your laptop and had an, an extra monitor. Um, although you can see that some of them are identical, um, uh, you need it extended, meaning you need two desktops. You then move your video window to the extended desktop, which then gets outputted to your streaming laptop. I really, really recommend this right here. This is the Elgato HD60S capture card. And what that allows you to do is plug an HDMI source, which again, if you have a TV, you, you know exactly what an HDMI source is. I plug my out video out of my DJ laptop, which runs directly into the capture card. And then right here is a USB-C, which runs directly into my computer. From there, you can now input your video window into your computer. Now keep in mind, I said you needed a good DJ, you needed a good DJ computer to play the video. You also equally need a decent, a streaming computer to uh, allow the video to play 
properly as well, or you will have issues because keep in mind, if you are playing with a video already of you DJing and then adding a separate window, um, again, at a decent frame rate of music video, you do need a very good computer as well. So I really highly recommend you do not go anything less than that. Um, I can speak with conviction on that because I, uh, I bought the HD 60, not the S. I bought the HD 60 from a little punk kid in Newcastle. <laughs> okay. I, I got Tim, my boy Stoivo, to walk over to the kid's house. He sold it to me for like 60, 70 bucks. Keep in mind, this is $250. I thought I was being clever. I was like, you know what? I am going to save some money and get the HD 60. Well, I was wrong. And the HD 60 cannot keep up to date with live caption, meaning I would play a music video and the audio is faster than the music video and there was no way around it. It's just that it was not meant for that. So Epic has this built into his computer. Not everyone is that special. (laughs) Not everyone is that special. It's the same price almost. (laughs) This is what I recommend. If you wanted to save a tiny bit of money, there's something called a cam link, which kind of looks like a USB drive. It's USB into the computer and HDMI on the end. It it legit looks like a a USB drive. Um, There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just think that this gives you a bit more control because it also gives you an output as well. So let's say you wanted to see what you were outputting. This also gives that that capability as well. So I highly, highly recommend a capture card. A lot of people ask me, can you use the cheap capture cards from, from Amazon? I want to say maybe. And the reason why I say that is because some people, it works. And some people, it doesn't. Yes. D-smooth I've talked is. to people. Yes. D- d- right? D-smooth d- 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 uh, d- is. But here's the thing. I've talked to people that have bought those and they don't work. I don't know why. Maybe it's, maybe it's the requirements of the computer they're using. I just don't know. I just, I know this works. And I speak with conviction that this works. So, if you would like, you can go on Amazon and get the $50, $60 one. Uh, D-Smooth, if, you, if you'd be so kind, maybe you can even put a yeah, link in there to the did. people if, if, if you want. Oh, awesome. Um, but like I said, um, I, don't, I do not want to say it's going to work fully because I have talked to people who have bought it and it does not work. So mm-hmm. purchase with caution is all I'm saying. Um, D-Smooth has one and it works. I, I talked to... Um, um, one of the guys from Black Reaction, he just bought one. It works. But I've talked to some other people. That doesn't work. So I am not saying don't buy it. I'm just saying if you do buy it, it may not work. That's all I want to say. I know for a fact this will work. It's just a bit more money. The cam link will also work. It's a bit less money than this. Um, but keep in mind, I mean, this is not a USB, but, but the cam link is about this size as well. And think about that. You plug this into your computer and then you plug an HDMI cable. And again, this is a bad example because it's a USB. But just think about the weight of the USB in, in, on your computer. That may not be the best thing because keep in mind, you have something that's about two and a half to three inches long. Then you're plugging a decently heavy cable into it as well. For me, I just don't, I just don't trust that. Uh, if you do, um, okay, but... Again, I just, I highly recommend this. Right. Um, if, you, if you feel like being brave, I say go with, uh, with what D-Smooth is saying and, and, get, and get the cheap one. Um, if you get it off Amazon, you can always return it. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, but I just, I can speak with conviction to say this works and I know the cam links works as well. So yeah. to answer and, the question, smooth, sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, to answer, the, to, to answer the question, that is in a nutshell how you do music videos. Um, it just depends on uh, the the av- excuse me the avenue you want to take. Yeah, and uh, just to dis- yeah exactly. And what Smooth is saying is like is is good, right? In a sense that you could use the Cam Link, which is a cheaper one for about twenty bucks. But you know whether you know maybe you're using that for a secondary camera or a third camera. Again, like I I'm I'm probably on Jay's side of this where I know that the Elgatos are are powerful and they work and they also give you sixty frames per second if you have that. Um, ability. Um, but again, like there's nothing wrong with the $20 one. If you want a secondary camera that only shows your decks and your mixer or a secondary camera that shows a different view. Um, but again, the options are there. 
And in order for, you know, we answered the question about the music videos. Um, Jay, do you want to, you want to keep going on another question or? Uh, yeah. So uh, the next question I see here is how do you stay caught up with the chat while DJing? Mm -hmm. One answer practice. Um, I don't, I don't know about anyone else, but unless you were DJing on Twitch before COVID, this was never an issue unless you were reading text on your phone while DJing. Yeah. Um, you, you, it takes practice. Um, and what I, what I've learned since I've been streaming since April is you need to respect the platform. Twitch is a very, I want to say extremely interactive platform. Meaning when people pull up, they expect to talk to you directly, mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing, they don't care. And I've literally seen where people pull up, they say, hi, I've seen it where people do not say hi back and those people leave. I'm not saying everyone's going to do that, but I really highly recommend you really get involved with your chat. Um, yeah. I think D smooth does an amazing job, like incredible hands down, like genius and, and and i don't use that term often but but genius the, the way he interacts with everybody um it, legit just and i'll tell you something uh you know most of us djs and i know i know not all of us are used to it but some of us are you know we're not mcs at the same time i mean this is a good way to practice that skill set as well um i noticed that when i and this is just from experience i'm pretty sure i'm um, hoping this hopefully this is valuable but I know from experience that if I don't talk um, while I'm mixing that uh, pe like people drop um, and it's really important to keep them engaged. And you know, there, there's other ways to keep the chat going, right? Like you could have moderators. So I know that Stoivo is a moderator for Jay. Um, I know you have multiple moderators actually. I do. Um, and a moderator is a really, really good way to keep people into your chat. So I, this is kind of a compound question because there's another question of how do you get more followers and how do you keep people engaged? Um, so, you know, how do you, and back to the original question is how do you stay focused on the chat while you're DJing? So like, I understand, you know, you're making mixes and you're, you're trying new things and you're being creative. Um, but you know, there's certain ways that you can keep that going. So the way I have my setup is I have my main, streaming computer right beside my DJ, uh, my SRT, uh, DDJ 1000. And so like I can look to my side and I can see the chat going because Streamlabs has that ability. Once you're live, the right side of Streamlabs turns into your chat. Uh, so I have that. Uh, so I can turn around and I can look and I can see what's going on. Um, I also have like my moderator is actually not in the chat. My moderator is my, my girlfriend. She sits behind me and she tells me what's going on. So you can have that going on like a wife, a girlfriend, a partner, um, to let you know what's going on in the chat. I know a bunch of DJs actually have an iPad that literally sits like right in front of them on their DJ table or their studio table, um, right yeah, beside you their can deck. You see you, you, yeah. where, right where my finger is there. That is my Android exactly. tablet, which, uh, which displays my, uh, which displays my chat. Right. So be creative, like have your Twitch going at the same time as while you're DJing. If you need it in front of you, some people just have, like, I, I, I remember when baby you started his stream, he literally just had his phone like lying on top, almost on top of his S uh, his S nine. And he was just looking at the chat from there. And I think he's evolved now. He's got a monitor and whatever. Um, but in, if you want to keep going with your chat and I, and it's hundred percent important, I'm telling you, um, talk to your people, man. It, it keeps your channel going. It keeps them coming back um, and subscribing and all, all of those things, um, you know, they go a long way. And, and, and just, just to touch on what Epic said is, is that you need to respect the platform, which is, is a very interactive platform. You need to interact with your chat. Um, I know, I know Epic said mods, maybe, maybe people don't know what that is. Um, a mod, AKA moderator is someone who works for you in your chat that says hello to people. Um, thanks people for tuning in. Um, thanks them for cheering in bits. And again, if you don't understand what that means, we're going to get into that later, but it's someone who moderates your chat so that, um, if you miss anybody, um, they will take care of that for you. And I know, I know, uh, smooth has this guy named Buford who is just yes. the man, like, like the, Legend. Uh, like the, the man, like just, he does not miss a single 
thing. Um, DJ vibe to more followers. We are going to get to that. Um, Buford is the man. Like he doesn't miss anything. Um, I, I have one named uh, Your Destiny 84, who is a personal friend. Her name is Joe. Also does not miss a beat. Uh, Kid Arctic um, and Cut for Cut in Scratches Chats does not miss a beat. Everyone that comes in that says what's up, they say what's up. Even if Scratch misses it, um, they like. I really, really recommend it. If you're just getting started, a girlfriend or a wife, whether they want to or not, um, is, is a really good start. Um, yes. Also, I recommend teaming up. Um, shout out... Um, uh, D money, uh, D money, uh, before, uh, uh, your destiny 84 started doing mine D money was my moderator. And, mm-hmm. and I would, and, and again, he would mod for me and then I would mod for him. So team up with other people as well to, uh, to do, uh, to do moder- uh, moderation. But, but okay. again, I understand, um, it, it, to, to, again, going back to the question of how do you keep up? I understand that none of us are professionals at this. I mean, I mean, other than smooth, but, um, it's just a way for you that if you do miss some messages, you do have someone that has your back. Um, I know flames asking who wants to be his moderator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, again, and shout out to work, the wife. He's a Twitch, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> facts. Arctic. Facts. Um, so, yeah. so, so, so to answer the question um, to keep interacting again, one, you need to have your chat. You need to be able to see your chat. There are so many times where I pull up to streams and the DJ is not looking at the chat at all. And, and honestly, I leave because if I can't interact with the DJ, um, unless I'm just looking to just turn the stream on and leave it, um, mm-hmm. I'm out of there. And I yeah. imagine there's a lot of people too. So it goes back to respecting the platform. Twitch is an interactive platform. Shout out your peeps, man. You like, need they, to interact. They, they show up and they want you to notice them. Yep. And I'm telling you, it goes a long way. And, and, and hook up a microphone. I've seen a couple of DJs that don't have a microphone. So I know you can type in your chat, but the easiest way for a DJ while he's mixing is obviously to have a microphone. Um, so make sure you have that set up. Yeah, I, I think that covers that, right, Jay? Um, yep. Um, are, are we limited production-wise on Twitch? Which if we multicast from OBS slash Streamlabs to multiple platforms? Um, I... I, I don't recommend that, and, I, and, I, and I'll explain why. Depending on where you're going, um, aka sometimes other people not only like to stream to Twitch, they like to stream to Facebook, they like to stream to YouTube. Some of the other platforms are not as copyright-friendly as Twitch is. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing worse than streaming to Facebook. And think of Facebook kind of like the old Instagram where you'd be streaming and Instagram would shut you off. Facebook is a bit nicer, although owned by the same people. They're a bit nicer. They mute your stream. So think about how bad that would look if you are now streaming live on Facebook. Your stream has now been muted, and it's just a muted version of you bouncing around and talking to people, but no one can hear your stream. It happens on YouTube. It happens on Facebook. Um, it doesn't happen on all the platforms, but I know, I know those two are the major ones. Um, Sometimes people get away with it. Sometimes they don't. Again, that's where testing comes, comes in. Uh, for me, I just don't recommend it just for the fact of if someone pulls up, they don't know. The people that are pulling up, they don't know that, oh, Facebook muted you. They literally, again, the first thing that comes to mind is this person has no idea what they're doing. Yeah. So I just really test, but honestly. And just to chime in on that, actually, Jay. Go ahead you don't want to thin yourself out. Like you don't want to send 10 people to YouTube, 10 people to Facebook and 10 people to Twitch. Like, I feel like, I feel like if you, like, if you don't do that restream, like there's a lot of people are doing restream, I think to, to, to go to YouTube and Facebook, like just, just focus on the one platform. If it's YouTube that you want, Mm -hmm. you know, and Jay touched on like the copyright infringements potentials that's going to happen there. Uh, Okay. Then by all means, like focus on YouTube. But I feel like, like the way Twitch is, and with all the other DJs going on at the same time, it's, it's probably better for, and, and there was a question about how do I get more followers? Well, this is how you do it, right? Bring, bring yourself to where all the other successful legendary DJs are bringing themselves. Yep. Don't put yourself on somewhere else. Um, don't spread and, yourself thin. And don't spread it out. Exactly. So um, personally, I would also shy away from, from streaming on multiple platforms. 
Um, yeah. To answer answer to answer B two J's question, um, but doesn't that happen on your Twitch video? So yes, um, after your streaming is done. Yeah. Um, al although Epic has told me that after his stream is done, he's able to download it right away with no mutes. But it has um, to be immediately after, like but, immediately. But but, but e even saying that, brother, I've talked yeah. to people who have done that. Even even D Money in this chat right now. Yeah, has it's literally so weird. went thirteen seconds after, and it was still muted. So okay, um, yeah. Again. Uh, that happens after the fact. That does not happen live. But to answer the question of, of using a, something like Restream or going to multiple platforms, excuse me, um, you do have that option where those platforms will mute you. And if that happens, again, people are pulling up and they're seeing a muted stream. To me personally, that doesn't look good. And again, Twitch is a major platform, and I know some DJs making some real money right? Some real money. The big ones are making real money. 1000 2000 3000 $4,000 a month DJing on Twitch. The gamers are making nine times more than we are because they have thousands of people. But keep that in mind. If you really want to be successful with this and have your, uh, your, your average viewers up, Keep everything in one. Push everything to one. Do not stream to Instagram. Um, although, uh, although someone wants to ask, how do you go live on Instagram? But not really. I want to save that to the advanced setting stuff, yes, which, we'll which we are going to get to. Okay. So the next question we have is, are Twitch overlays and banners made in OBS or elsewhere? So as a, as a designer myself who makes Twitch overlays and banners, um, unfortunately, it is well, not made in OBS. Uh, there are, like we showed you with the, the widget, themes and all that there are a few themes but like i mentioned they're made for gaming they're not made for like what we're trying to achieve um so if you have your own designer that makes your flyers and your instagram graphics and any of your social stuff uh by all means hit them up and let them know uh what you, like what your stream output is so like in most cases it's 720p or 1080p that's like a standard uh, TV like resolution or computer monitor resolution and that's in a camera resolution that's what you're going to be streaming out as and uh, you know hit them up and let them know like uh, I need an overlay and I need a space for my camera and I need a space for my chat window um, but these are all designed elsewhere um, and if you want to like hit me up I by all means yeah I can help you out Okay. And, and I'd like to touch on that as well so, so Epic um, is a brilliant I want to say brilliant designer um, but but some people don't have uh, money right now because of mm -hmm. COVID. Um, that being said, um, as as gifted as Epic is, there is um, I don't want to say it a ghetto way, but there is a way that you can download a background from from Google. That's right. And you can add pieces on top of it. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, you so so to answer the question. Um, although I still recommend a graphic designer because a graphic designer knows to only use a certain amount of fonts and the, and, and font families and, mm -hmm. and how to position things. Um, if you don't have the money for a designer, you can still do it. You can still download graphics off YouTube. You can still add your logo. You can still do all of these things. So yeah. to answer the question, yes, you, you, you can do everything and everything top to bottom in Streamlabs, in OBS Studio, in OBS Live, you can do everything. Um, but I, 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 I mean, it's still recommended you get a graphic yeah. designer. And e even as a designer myself, like if there's a will, there's a way. Like go to Google, search, um, I don't know, like Twitch I overlay frame or Twitch frame or video frame, and you will find a bunch of stuff. Yep. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, Jake, go ahead. If you just want to finish that off and then. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say, man. I mean, like you, you do what you got to do. Um, at the end of the day, uh, when people come to Twitch, they come to Twitch because of you. And, and the vibe you bring, the energy you bring, the music you bring. So um, although having a graphic designer is awesome, um, it's not necessary. So you can build your own thing through Streamlabs itself. Um, but, but again, mm -hmm. it's always nice to, um, it's always nice to have a, a, yeah. have a designer like, like Epic. Okay. So we're, we're basically starting to dabble into like the advanced stuff about, Streamlabs and Twitch streaming, and the questions are clearly going that way. Um, 
So uh, do you want to answer the next one? Because it really, what we're going to start doing is I, talking I, I, about, I, I, yeah. let's, let's wait for the emotes. Cause I really, um, I want to sign into my Twitch and I want to show you everything. Um, That's on a great my idea. Twitch. So, but let's, let's start, let's start with before having the chance to even uploading an emote. Um, and I believe we should start segueing into getting to becoming an affiliate. Um, there are a few things that you have to do. So, so Twitch basically but, has but before you this, go on that, oh, yeah, explain, go ahead, go ahead. explain what an affiliate That's is. exactly what I'm about to do. So Twitch has <laughs> these tiers of, and a system basically as a streamer. So there's a benefit system basically. So if you are a streamer that, you know, you know, might have five to 10 viewers, which is completely fine. We're DJs. We'll play for anybody. It's for the love of music. Um, but they have, specific criteria that you have to meet to become part of their affiliate and partner system. So an affiliate of Twitch is basically someone who reads, meets these requirements. So I believe Epic, it's like, I'm going to share my screen, uh, go ahead. which is actually going to put a visual, but, but, but can, can continue talking. Yeah, exactly. So an affiliate for Twitch is basically someone who meets their requirements, which is you have to stream. If I'm not mistaken to what three, seven different days in a month, Yep. Um, in a 30 day yep. window. That's correct. And then you have to reach about 50 followers. Um, I'm yep. sure after this show, we'll all have 20 each minimum or 30 um, stream for eight hours and then have an average of three viewers. So in order to become an affiliate, you need those, those things. And uh, I'll tell you right now, in if a you, 30 day window, not just all in, in one month. So if you, if you engage with your crowd, like we talked about before, um, if you, 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 you know, you get your chat going, you potentially have a moderator or a girlfriend, wife, partner who can help you. Um, you can achieve the, this 100% in a month. And once you become an affiliate, there's some options for you. So one is you can get paid, um, for bits, subscribes. Um, there's like a monetary, uh, like there's, there's like a set cost for certain things. And then you get a certain payout from Twitch, um, at a certain point, like at, I think it's like hundred bucks or something you get paid out. Um, and you can add emojis so that you can customize your chat basically and make it more interactive, engaging for your Twitch following. Um, and, and it's huge. Like that's like a huge step. Like that's what makes your channel next level. Becoming a partner is very difficult. Um, you have and, to be and I don't even want to touch on that tonight. Cause yeah, me neither. None of us are partners. So I don't think anyone, anyone can speak on that because none exactly. of us are partners anyway. So, um, but becoming an affiliate is very achievable. Uh, you could start, you could do it this month. I'm telling you. Um, and, and I think it's a very important step of making your stream, um, a valuable stream for someone to come and check out, like not just your normal following that would come to your, your gigs, um, and your family members and your friends that support you. But random people that will stumble upon your channel. And that's happened. Um, and because I had e like emojis and because I had an affiliate status, I was able to do certain things. Um, I've had random people just join my channel. And you know, that's more than you can ask for as a DJ, right? Is to like get people to notice you from all over the world. Um, so yeah, um, Jay, if you want to piggyback for that. Epic. Um, yeah, so uh, B2J just asked, do you need to register as a business for a payout? Although um, I would recommend yes. Um, yeah. No, you don't. You, don't. Um, you can sign up as, as yourself, um, as as your full name, your full government name, and uh, and that is the way you can do it. Yeah. Um, you would sign up, and and through all your taxes, you're responsible for your own taxes. Um, although it's still better as a business, um, but again, uh, to answer the question, no, you don't have to. And, and, and but, yeah, to, it asks to, you a to, ton of questions and you need to put in like some pretty sensitive information. Yeah. And, and, um, and, to, and to explain more, cause I, I, not, not to hate on Epic, but to be a Twitch affiliate is to think of it as to be a Twitch employee. Mm -hmm. You are representing a company who is profit sharing your stream, right? Anyone that subscribes to you, which the minimum tier is $7 a month, you get 350 Twitch gets 350 so um, in order to do that, um, yes, you're going to have to fill out some information. Uh, Four-step process. The first step is your PayPal. Um, you need PayPal to get paid. So if you don't have a PayPal, you need to register PayPal. PayPal, you can then register with, uh, and link to your bank account. So if you want to move the money, you can do that. You don't have to keep everything in PayPal. Second step is your tax information. And the reason why I know this is because I literally helped someone two days ago do this. Second step is your tax information. Uh, that's where you put in all your personal information. And, uh, and again, I know, I know some people are like, I don't know, I want to do this. 
Um, if you want to become an affiliate, you have to do it. There is no workaround. There's no hack. You got to do it. Um, like I said, you are responsible for your own taxes. Um, if you decide not to claim your Twitch income, that's your business. I don't recommend it, but it is your business. So that's the second step. The third step is, I believe, um, an employee agreement, meaning um, as a Twitch employee, and I want to say kind of because um, and sometimes employee means like you do this every day. You could stream once a month. You're still a Twitch employee. They, there's a code of conduct um, being a Twitch affiliate, uh, affiliate that you need to follow. So you need to read that one page. And then the last page is just confirming all your information. Once you do all those, th those steps, you are now an affiliate. You can now monetize your channel. Monetizing comes in a couple ways. Like we already mentioned, a subscription. Someone subscribes to you for 30 days. Um, part of, part of, which again, part of it you get. It's a $7 subscription. You take $350. Twitch takes $350. People can then uh, cheer for you, aka they send you bits. One bit equals one cent. Sometimes people cheer 100 bits, meaning that's a dollar. At the end of your stream, you take all that money. Twitch takes zero percentage of your bits. Um, what Kid Arctic is saying is on a monthly basis, you get paid, I believe it's the 15th of every month, you need to make a minimum of $100 for Twitch to pay you out. And the reason being is Twitch does not want to be paying you $30 because that's a lot. Um, a, a lot of transactional fees uh, for Twitch itself. Um, so again, you need to really, really, really make some good money. Uh, the next thing to, to make good money is to have cool emotes. Again, which we're going to show you. An emote is an emoji. An emoji is a custom uh, emoji that, that you create, whether it be your logo, whether it be your face, whether it be a saying. Um, I highly 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 recommend when you become an affiliate you have your first emoji ready to go and the reason being is when someone decides to pay you seven dollars a month and again there are other tiers that we're going to talk about but the first one is the seven dollars a month which is again i would say 90 percent of what people do is the first tier part of them paying that is they get to use your emotes for 30 days so I recommend having at least one emote because if someone were to pay you $7, although they are supporting your channel, the only way to give back other than to DJ for them is to have an emote that they can use. So I really recommend having an emote and we're going to get into the sizing and what those are um, and, and again, how to get more. Um, but again, I just, I just wanted to, to touch on that about the, um, the, to being, being a, an affiliate and, and payment, um, yeah. have an emote. And uh, just quickly, so like in order for you to see where you're at, uh, if you've been streaming for the last few months, you could actually just go to your, like your, your channel, like your settings, and then you go to the channel insights. So like that shows where like, like what your average stream is, like how many people look at your stuff and like, it's all your analytics to see how your stream is going. Your revenue stream will be there as well. Yep. Um, and a lot of information there. Like you should definitely and, and, check out your dashboard whenever you can. Yeah. And to answer, and, and that kind of just answers storm question. How, how do you see yeah. your payout balance? Exactly. Um, again, in your, uh, so I recommend if you're on Twitch right now, twitch.tv, you go to your top right hand corner where, where your logo is or, or, or where your icon is, you click settings. That brings you to a bunch of, um, things. I, I believe it's channels and videos. Channel I videos, think it's called. Yep. yep. You click that. And then, uh, there's an insight. Uh, category, which then you drop down and then you can go channel analytics. That's, That's right. where you'll see all of your payout. And like I said, if you do not make $100, um, and that's, that's in us, if you do not make $100, your payout will carry over to the next month. Yeah. Until you make the minimum of a hundred or more, right? Exactly. Um, so yeah, so that answers a few questions there, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, how do you uh, add the new followers and new subscriber widget in your overlays? Yeah. So I guess I showed it in my thing, but I didn't really explain how. Um, but basically what you need to do is it's, it's, it's just a source. It's an alert box. Um, that's new subscriber, new follower. It's all part of the same widget that you can add as a source on, uh, on Streamlabs. So sim similar to how you're adding your webcam or your audio capture, you can add an alert box and that's how you get the new follower, um, subscriber bits, uh, whatever it may be. 
hosting, raid, uh, alerts. It's all under one. And again, keep in mind, if you're not using Streamlabs, um, you can still have all of these widgets. Um, we're going to show you how to import them via other sources, but just keep that in mind that um, if you are not using Streamlabs, there are other widgets you can use. It just takes a bit longer uh, to, to do. And, uh, and uh, the perfect example would be DSmooth, who uses OBS Studio um, and, again, has a, a lot of different functions on his stuff. Um, but, again, it, it just takes a bit more work uh, to, to do all that, where Streamlabs makes it very um, streamlined and easy. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen right now. We're going to go back to my uh, stream elements. And uh, another question I saw before was how to add. Um, I see people with chats built into their overlay. Um, how is that done? So I'm going to show you that right now. So again, if you are using Streamlabs, these are where we're going to get into the widget section. If you're not using Streamlabs, you're going to have to wait a tiny bit, but I'm still going to show you how to do this. So just as you add your sources, like your video, cam uh, your video camera, your microphone, your everything, there is something called widgets on this side. E e Epic, you, you can see that or it's not showing? So it looks great. Keep going. Awesome. So when you come over here to the widget side, there is something called chat box. Now, when you add the chat box um, over here, uh, I've already have some pre-created, but I, I'm going to make a new one just so we, we can show. So again, you create a new source, you add the chat box. And now um, this is giving you the settings of your chat box. You can set the width of it, the height of it. Um, and then all of the settings, uh, even the background color, as you see here uh, with people, uh, again, this is just an example. Nothing's actually happening there. Um, you can set the color. You can show how many messages show within the chat box. You can style change the of it font. actually go, just go back real quick because this, there's different styles in the themes. Yeah. So for example, um, that is the, the we're on the box. We can go to Twitch, which, which is that style. Again, there's no background. There's the clean style, which is just, um, I think flat. Everything's the same, uh, same font size. There's old school, which again is going to give you that old school look there. I don't know what yeah. font that is, but again, um, and then there's the chunky look. Um, which is that, which again, I think a little bit a more bolded, a little bigger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I, I like the box to, to, to be honest, because the box you can kind of add, um, you can kind of add ev everything in there. So again, we're going to add that. Now, again, as you see here, I, I, Epic, you can see this green box here or, or no? Uh, yes. You, you, right. So, so a, as you see here, as I drag this, this is where the chat box will be. And I know one of the questions, I think it was DJ Flame, who was asking, how do you get it to show clearly? So the key thing is, is to drag where you need it. Now, let's say we want to make it go lower. So what I like to do is I, I always like to set it to where it kind of, I kind of want it to be and then edit it after. So watch. So I set it here, but let's say I want it to go down all the way to this brown box here. So I come back here, I push properties, and then I come up here to the height. And, and again, it's a lot of just testing. Let's say 800. And now you're going to see it move down more. Mm -hmm. Let's say I want it longer. Let's say 900. And again, that's, that's legit how you do it. I push done. And that yeah. is the open chat box window. Now I'm going to close my other chat. I'm going to mute it. So that way, and then again, a, a way to test it is your chat box on the sign here. We can just start typing and push enter and boom, there it goes right there. You can, you can yeah. see it right on the screen. And again, I'm not live right now. This is just offline. I'm typing and, and, and again, it comes up online. And again, yeah. if you want, you can now resize after that as well. Uh, oh, I'm not even resizing that right one. Again, you can resize it now to, to, to show like that. So let, let's say you have a small chat box. I mean, that's kind of unreadable. So now you can actually see where it, yeah. it's going to be readable. So, so to answer two questions in one, that is how you add the chat box. And again, to make it readable, you set the um, general dimensions of it. You and then could again, also you set can, the uh, font size as well, Jay. Yes. Just touch on that if you go back to the properties. Um, but keep in mind, yeah. keep in mind, you have this box here and the limitations within the box. That's right. So if you set your font too high, I do see where some people will, uh, the, the chat message gets cut off. So I recommend you start chatting to yourself and doing stuff like this, like I'm doing right now and getting to see what happens. And again, all offline, no one has to see this, but it will save you the hassle of going live and having your chat box cut off. That's right. Keep in mind, you don't need this. 
right? This is not something that's mandatory to do. This is only if you want to have a chat box, but I recommend really, really practicing with it before doing that. Um, another, another cool uh, widget um, like, like Epic talked about was an alert box. An alert box um, shows you um, people that throw bits, um, throw donations, uh, merch. I don't have donations or merch, so I keep that off. Um, anyone that subscribes to your channel, anyone that follows your channel, anyone that hosts your channel, anyone that raids your channel. So um, I only have, uh, as you see, only the green ones here. Yeah. And when I add that, I now have a window that where my alert box is going to pop up. So and you can test I, them as well. I'm going to resize it right now. Cause again, I don't want it. I don't want it to come up while I'm DJing, let's say. And then right at the bottom here. And again, this is something that does not happen in stream labs. Um, uh, sorry, in, in OBS live. Um, again, not to say you can't do it, but this is, this is something that is a kind of uh, stream labs based. And again, there is ways you can do it if you're using the other software. But the cool part is, is I can come down here. Um, Epic, you can see where I'm, where I'm doing the test right now? Yep. When you click test, when someone, let's say, follows me, I can test it. And I got Frank the Tank there from old school. And, and, and again, you can even customize the message that comes up. You can even customize the GIF. Um, there's tons of GIFs that you can even choose from. Or I can choose my own. Or you can make your own. You can, like, there, there's GIF um, maker um, websites online that you, that you can make it as well. If someone subscribes... Same thing. Let's say, uh, like, I mean, I have Frank the Tank for all of them, but like, let's say you wanted a different one for every one you have, you can do that. But again, the best part is, is you can move it and then test it again and make sure. Okay, and we got a little sound. I don't know if, Epic, did you hear the sound there or no? You heard the sound? Uh, I couldn't hear the sound. Oh, okay. I don't think it's coming well, through. Well, again, again, so, so again, um, as you see here, as I've added the alert box, there's even a, a, a little sound box here. Yeah. I typically turn it off because, again, I'm playing music and I don't want that to happen. But, again, um, just another cool widget that you can have. And, and again, you get to customize it fully uh, to, to your channel. Um, uh, follower goal, uh, which, which I, I already have, which, which is something that you set – um, and I'm going to turn that on right now. Now, I, I haven't updated it from last night. I, I, I hit my follower goal last night and appreciate everyone that pulled up for that. But my follower goal is, is a bar that allows people to see your status to the follower goal you're looking for. So um, you, you set that in your properties. And again, every single source has properties that you can go into and edit. So we'll, we go into the right. follower goal properties. Um, Follower goal properties. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm actually using stream elements for this, which I'll, I'll get into. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know what, J just, just for the, for, for the sake of this, I'm going to make a new follower goal here. <clears throat> so you add the follower goal. Um, again, just like the other one, you can completely customize it. You set the title. So we'll call it my October follower goal. Um, you get to set the amount. Um, so let's say, I think right now I'm at 800 something. So my new follower goal would be 900. And currently it says I'm at 831 followers. So I put that and then I put the end, which again, if it's the October, my ending date would be uh, the 11th month, the first day in 2020, meaning my follower goal will end uh, November 1st. And then boom, there you go. I push done. And now I get this follower goal that again, I can just stick anywhere. And again, you can customize the color. You can customize. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I literally just got a new follower, right? Like, look, like it's working. I'm That's not amazing. even online, but, but just to show you, I don't know if you guys saw that, but someone just followed me. That's and, unbelievable. And it worked. I, I, just, just to prove that it's working, someone on the internet just followed me. So Shout out Rob Beal for that follow. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. But again, uh, that, that's how you do it. Um, let's say it's hard to read. Uh, as you see, my October follower goal is in white. Um, it's hard to read. You can change the font size. You can change the font color. You can change the font style. You can change the, the bar color, the, the, the background bar color. Um, everything is customizable. And as you see here, um, you can also crop, which by holding alt, you hold alt, you can then crop it. So like, let's say I didn't want to show the zero 10 days. I can actually crop it now. And let's say I didn't want to show my October follower goal. Look, I, I just cropped it now. Now I could put that. Well, now I'm moving something else. Um, I could put that anywhere. Um, and, You're a designer and, and, now, Jay. There you go, brother. See? Let's go. You see that? Uh, another, uh, another thing to show you is see how I just grabbed something. I, I went to grab this and I grabbed something else. 
you need to lock your sources. And as you see here, there's all these little lock bars here. I really recommend you lock everything. There's a nice shortcut. If you right click, you can actually click lock source. That epic. I don't know if you knew that, but oh, yeah. uh, you right click lock sources. Now all of them lock. Now, um, if you, whatever you want to deal with, you can then unlock and now move it around. And that way you don't have to touch, uh, t touch any other sources. Um, Another cool thing, uh, uh, moving back to the um, alt, you can automatically crop. So uh, we'll go to my GoPro here. So there is the size readjustment uh, again, right? You can do that. But let's say um, I don't want this speaker in the, uh, in, in the shot for, for some reason. When you hold alt and then drag from the side, I can actually cut that off right mm -hmm. there. And then again, I can resize it in, in frame as well. Right. So again, just a lot of customizable things you can do um, yeah. to 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 customize the channel. So um, just more tips and tricks that uh, that that we're touching on. And, and what Jay um, just showed you is going to come really in handy when he talks about green screens. Yes. Um, so um, we'll get we'll get into that in like just a little bit. Viewer count. Something else you can do. You can add that source in here. I, I'm literally just messing up my my new rate of money. So I'm gonna have to definitely go back. But, but the viewer count, uh, as you see here, um, although kind of hard to read right now, um, shows you the viewer count. And again, that's this is just another widget that you can add to your count that shows how many people are watching. Some people want it, some people don't. I think Epic, I, I believe you have that. Uh, I have it. Here. I have it on a couple of my shows. There's one show I don't have it on, but yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, um, it's there sometimes. But I, but I, really, I really recommend you just go through. And, and the best part is, is, um, I don't even need to explain everything because when you go into these, it actually explains everything when you add the source. That's another cool thing about it. When you mm -hmm. add the source itself, it explains every single thing that it does. What a stream boss is, what the jar is, what the chat box is. It explains everything. So I don't, I don't want to go into detail, but just to give you an idea of, of, of other things you can do within Streamlabs using uh, the widgets. So, um, yeah. And you don't have to be a designer to do it clearly. Like no. Jay, Jay was just showing you all the stuff that he popped in. And, and again, it's all about trial and error. Just put yep. stuff in, see what's going on. Um, if you, if it's too messy, then take it out. Or if you like it, then make sure it works with your computer. Like there's obviously like there's step-by-step -step to make sure that everything works out. But Jay just literally showed you how he made a whole bunch of stuff happen, um, within like what, five minutes. So <laughs> Producer Rob with the follow. Appreciate that. I guess that was, that, that was uh, Rob, Ro Robble, I guess, Rebel. I don't know. No, that, that appreciate sense, Either way, I appreciate it. Um, uh, yeah. So that is the, that is the way, um, that is the way you add widgets within uh, Streamlabs itself. Um, what I do want to touch on is how to add um, widgets let's say if you're in OBS or like I like, like again, when I went to go do my follower goal, um, I wasn't using the stream labs follower goal. I was actually using a, a website called stream elements. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to reshare my screen here and we're going to go into stream elements. Um, this is stream elements. This is um, a, a separate website that, that, uh, that you can use. Um, if you sign into stream elements from yours, you can actually sign in right with your Twitch. You don't like, you don't need another um, username or password sign right in with your Twitch. Um, I'm already signed in. So I'm just going to use my dashboard there. And then this is how you go about uh, doing all of that. So first of all, let's go to my overlays. And then this is how I did the follower goal. Um, and again, it's just kind of like a new canvas, just like we were using in Streamlabs. Um, but again, as you see here, here is my follower goal. Um, and again, just like in Streamlabs, um, I get more settings. I get more positioning and styles, and I get more text settings, um, even more than Streamlabs offer. So, so what this allows me to do is, again, not only make a follower goal, but then add it into Streamlabs. So if you're using Streamlabs, um, sorry, if you're using OBS Live, if you're using OBS Studio, um, what you would do is you would set this up. Again, you can position it in any way possible. And then when you're done with that, you push save. And then this little link up here is your uh, cop, um, copy overlay URL. And what this allows you to do is copy the overlay URL and then come into um, Streamlabs. 
and then we add via a browser source because technically copying the overlay is a browser. It's a, it's a, a URL link. So what you come over here, you come over here and you push browser, add. We're going to add a new source, even though I already have it here. Add a source. And again, this is going to come up here because it, it doesn't really have anything. And you're going to copy and paste the one I just copied in there. And then um, you're going to want it to be the exact same aspect ratio as you set it up in there before. And again, you can set it up at 720, 1080. It doesn't matter. Um, I set it up as 1080 because that is what my canvas is. And my height, uh, sorry, my width is 1920 and my height is 1080. Um, and I do not want it to shut down. And what that means is if I change the scene, uh, the source will actually shut down. And I don't want it to do that. I want to keep it visible at all time. That, mean, that, that means it's updating always. Push done. And again, I now have what I just added here. And as you see, it is a massive window. So that's where that alt comes in again. And we can just make this a, a nice little box to deal with. That way we're not dragging that massive window around. And again, that is how you add browser sources. And again, that's just one browser source. That's just the follower goal. There, there's a ton of stuff within, uh, within stream elements uh, that we can do. As you see here, um, alert boxes. Let's say you don't want to use the Streamlabs alert box. Um, you, can, uh, you can use the stream elements alert box in the exact same way. You set it up on the canvas, just like we did. You push save and you copy the URL into a browser source, and then that, and that automatically imports it into your Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, OBS Live. Um, and again, tons, tons, tons of stuff. I know someone uh, asked about making emotes go on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. That comes in with alerts, and again, I don't know why they call it this, but it's called Capogen. And when you add this in, um, the first thing you need to do is you need to size it properly. Um, the first thing I like to do is I like to go width 1920 and the height is 1080. I like to center the widget and make sure it's good to go. I then come to settings. The emote size. This is every single emote that comes on screen, how big it will be. So um, the standard is 112. I, I recommend keeping it at 112. If you want to move it, I, I don't want to demonstrate what, what all the sizes are, but um, I recommend playing with it. Um, show um, on, obviously, and then show all, meaning every single emote that someone puts comes up on the screen. You want to enable emojis, meaning um, if, if someone's using their phone instead of their, the actual Twitch emotes, uh, those will show up as well. There's even a setting that you can use just your subscribers, meaning only subscribers to your channel will actually be able to, to toss emotes on the screen. And then the animations is there's a ton of them. I keep it random because I like all of them. Um, this is where you get to customize unlimited emotes per user. This could get intense depending on how many people are watching your stream. So you can actually adjust that, that only let's say six emotes per second. Um, and then how long do they stay on screen? So once we're done all of this and we've, and we figured out all of this, we push save. We then push copy URL. We come back here. And again, like, I'm like, again, this, this is getting really messy, but again, this is just the, the tutorial here. We come into a browser source, add, add a new browser source. We're going to call this emotes on screen. And again, we're going to add the source. And again, it's not going to show anything because the, uh, the original is not there. We add this. Again, 1920. Oh, that's 1820. 1920 by 1080. We do not want it to shut down now. And now when I do this, um, when I start flinging emotes here, so I'm just going to start flinging some emotes here in my chat. Here we go. We're just going to pop some of these in here. And then when I push go, they start flying around here. Look at that. There you go. Right. Look at and that. There, right. And there you go. Yeah. And keep in mind though, this could slow your, this, this could slow your stream down. Yes, these are just these are just advanced stuff. And again, it all takes time. It all takes practice. It all takes testing. Some people may not want, may not do this because I've seen some people with it, and the emotes are actually like going uh, really slow. So uh, keep that in mind. Just really keep that in mind that it's all all testing, all testing. <laughs> uh, Smooth wants me to tell you about uh, my my Twitch fest. Uh, the first uh, Twitch fest I ever done. 
Um, right. So I saw um, a ton of DJs, including Smooth, had all these emotes on screen. Um, and Smooth, again, nice guy, showed me how to put the emotes on screen. And I went over the top. And I just remember Smooth coming in <laughs> and legit, he couldn't see me. People were showing up to my stream and there were, it was a, it's like the emotes threw up and it, <laughs> you couldn't see me. It was just, a, it was an emote explosion. And I, I just, I vividly remember there was a ton of people in the chat and I just remember seeing Smooth's comment, which just honestly killed me. And he literally says, Jay, this is not what I expected when I showed you how to use this. <laughs> so like That's I said, unreal. a lot of testing goes into it. Uh, just make sure, just make sure that uh, you, uh, you, you test it. And again, the best part about it is, is you can do all of that offline. You don't even need to test it online. You just go right to the That's chat right. box, start firing emotes, and then see how it goes. You get to yep. see the size. You get to see how many go on the screen. You get to see how they react. Um, a ton of stuff like that. So I think that covers most of the widgets. Um, yeah, any correct. other widget questions we can answer, but I think I want to move on because, again, I, I don't want this to go too long tonight, but uh, I think that answers most of the questions that, um, that, the, that the, the widgets and uh, emotes, uh, uh, emotes on screen uh, will we'll handle there. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think we, so like I said, we're talking advanced here. So we want to go to towards things like green screening, lighting, and video overlays. Um, mostly the green screening lighting because we touched a bit about on video overlays, but in terms of with green screening. So like Jay, I think I think you use a green screen. I I I don't. Um, I I know so, how it so works. Do you want? I know how the lighting wanna, works. You know what? Do yeah. you want to go into yellow duck? Right now, I'm going to turn yeah. off my camera. I, I, I have a temporary green screen. I don't know if you see it in the back there. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to turn my camera. Yeah. Off. I'm going to set it up idea. Um, and, and do that. Uh, it's not my typical setup because as you see, I DJ over here and I have a lot more room. This is uh, much smaller. So I have a temporary setup that, again, is not what I typically do, but it's just going to show you um, a bit of how the green screen works. So uh, I'm going to turn my uh, video off right now. Epic, go into the yellow duck and how to stream on Instagram. Yeah, sounds good. And then I'm going to come back and we'll go on to the green screen stuff. Okay. So cool. a question that was asked um, is how do you go live? So the question was, how do you go live on IG, but not really live? So I'm, I'm assuming uh, what that means is how do you go live on Instagram? Basically telling people to like put a graphic up and telling people to go to your Twitch. Uh, Cause that's where your actual stream is. Um, so there is a way to do that. And, um, it requires, in my opinion, it requires a separate machine and correct me if I'm wrong, but the better way, the best way to do this is with a separate machine. So I understand that we talked about the fact that you have to have a streaming computer, but if you want to also add the IG live on top of that, um, you know, the way I do it specifically is I have a separate laptop. So I use my work laptop. You don't need a beast computer or anything of the sort for this specific, um, like application, like it has to, it, it, you just have to have the proper internet connection, which we talked about. Um, and as long as you have like the 10 or the 15 or 20, uh, you're good to go. But I use a separate can, um, I use a separate laptop. And what I do is I download OBS on that laptop as well. And I download a software called yellow duck. So search yellow duck. If you can, if you're on a computer and yellow duck, what it does is, is it logs into your Instagram. So unfortunately, like I can't confirm whether, I, you know, obviously they have a privacy policy. So like if they were to steal your Instagram, um, you know, you could obviously get into some sort of legal action with them, but I, I, and me and a bunch of other DJs have logged into this program. So it seems okay, but you're basically logging in with your Instagram credentials on a third party, uh, application called yellow duck. But what yellow duck does is it takes your Instagram, um, account information, and then it provides you with a stream key. So for Twitch to work, you need a Twitch stream key. Uh, and the way yellow duck works is it gives you a custom stream key in an OBS. You need to add that. So this is what I'll do is actually I'll share my screen. Um, because I feel like I'm getting a little too confusing. So here's OBS. And basically what you do is when you go to your settings, you go to output. So, or sorry, to stream. So currently I have my Twitch logged in. Um, but in order for you to use yellow duck, you have to actually stream to a custom 
and yellow duck is going to give you a stream key, which you need to put in once you log in with your uh, Instagram credentials. Unfortunately, I can't show you yellow duck cause it's on a separate computer. Um, but there is like a pretty substantial, like, um, like tutorial that they have on their website that could teach you how to do it. Um, and basically what you do is you would put that yellow duck stream key on that separate computer and then you would set up your OBS. So for a phone, uh, it's actually the opposite of what a Twitch stream is. So like a Twitch stream is 1920 by 1080, but uh, your phone is actually the opposite, right? Cause if you're looking at it, uh, like this, um, it's, it's not widescreen, it'd be portrait. So what you would do is you would actually have to go to, um, your output and you would have to change, um, sorry, your video output and you would have to change your canvas and your output to the opposite. So 1080 by 1920. And that way it like rotates it so that it's, it'll fit in a phone. And then you can add like a video overlay in there. You can even add a camera if you want to, if you're using the same, like if you're using like a webcam, sorry, if you want to plug in a webcam to your secondary machine, you can even have, have yourself as a camera view. Um, or you can have an overlay, a graphic. Usually most people use a graphic. So I would use a graphic um, that says, Hey, I'm live on Twitch. Um, and what yellow duck does is it, it keeps you live on, on Instagram live automatically. So even if you went on your phone and you looked at your Instagram, you wouldn't see that you're live, but other people would see. And basically after an hour though, because Instagram has an hour like limit, it would stop. So you would have to actually, um, log into yellow duck again, get a new stream key and re go, go live again on OBS. But that's the way to do it. You need yellow duck. You need a separate machine. And if you want to put an audio stream into that, you could use an iRig um, and use like your booth monitor, for example. So like I use my booth monitor, put the qu quarter inch into my iRig and then plug in, plug this into my secondary machine and my Instagram live will have audio through OBS. So you can actually have your mix going on both. Um, if you wanted to, some people don't do it because you want to encourage people to go to Twitch. Some people do it because they want people to see what songs they're playing and like what kind of vibe they're, they're having right at the, at the time. And then they want people to go to their Twitch to actually see what's going on and interact. Um, but yeah, but that's basically how you would get your IG live and, you know, get a, get a graphic designer or, you know, pop open the word or something and take a screenshot that says you're live on Twitch with your Twitch link and pop that as a media source into OBS on a secondary machine with yellow duck and pop that onto IG live. So what I do is usually before I go live on OBS for Twitch, I make sure that my IG live is on. Cause I know it's hard to like work with multiple sheet machines at the same time on top of the fact that you have to use your mixer and your decks uh, to DJ, but start IG live first with yellow duck, make sure that's all set up. Make sure you change your stream key. Cause it changes every single time you log in and then uh, go live on Twitch and you should be good to go. I think the hour is okay. Most people like to re up. Like I've done it multiple times. Like I've stopped yellow duck during my Twitch stream, logged back in, got a new stream key, put it into OBS on my secondary machine and went live again so that my IG live stays connected. Um, if I can, if I completely confused you, just let me know. Um, but I understand it's like a pretty difficult process, but that's, that's basically how you would get, um, get your IG live graphic that says, come to Twitch while you're, you know, while you have another streaming machine, uh, getting you going on Twitch. Jay, you get to go. Well, I mean, don't judge me. Cause this, this is not a proper setup. Eh? I'm I judging let you. everybody I'm judging know you. that this, this is just temporary. Cause again, I have limited space to do this at my uh, studio desk. Um, but I'm going to share my screen now. Um, and I'm going to show you how I put myself into overlays. So currently what you're looking at is my Yacht Life Thursdays. Shout out D Smooth, uh, one of my Yacht Life brothers. Um, I love the green screen aspect. And as soon as I um, seen this um, as a part of um, other people's streams, I'm, I'm very quirky in that sense that I'd love to have fun. And again, it's called Yacht Life. And I know every single person on there is in a nice boat. And I'm like, you know what? I got to be different. Um, and I'm going to put myself in the most craziest situations possible, but keep the vibes really going. So I'm going to show you um, how to do the green screen. And I'm going to show you how I do it here. Um, so what you're looking at here, uh, I'm actually going to turn off all my sources just so I can explain. Um, 
a lot of green screening is done with layers. Um, and if you don't understand what that means, um, you, Epic, do you want to explain layers? Cause you're, you're a graphic designer. I don't think I'm going to explain it as, as good as you are. Look, it, uh, I'll keep it as simple as possible. A layer is, is basically similar to a cake. Okay. You have a three layer cake, which means you have the first layer, which is the bottom one. You have one in the middle and you have the third layer at the top. And basically if you look top down onto the cake, you can see the top layer only. You won't be able to see the middle layer unless the top layer has some sort of transparency or some sort of design or some sort of cutout. So basically that's how layers work, okay? So, so whatever's at the bottom will be hidden if you have something on top of it or if, you, if you've laid it out in a specific way where they can all be shown. Um, I mean, I think that's the simplest way. So um, it all started with a raft, right? So as you see here, this is, a, this is not a moving image. This is, this is literally a PNG uh, that I have cut out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out Stoivo. Um, so then what I started to do is I started to add moving elements into it. So I found something uh, like this. So now I'm going to turn off the raft. And again, this is just a loop of a lake with a background. And then as soon as I put the raft in there, um, as you see, the raft is a head of the video layer, yeah. right? Um, if the raft, if I move the raft behind the video layer, you can't see it anymore. So again, you got to keep in mind that the, um, that your layers have to be in the right um, order or you're not going to see them. Um, so I'm just going to keep it extremely simple here. I know I have a lot more stuff here that I'm not going to turn on. Um, but I'm just going to show you how to get the GoPro. So the first thing we're going to see my GoPro here. Um, well, I mean, we're going to try to see the GoPro here. Uh, I guess this one. This is where it all goes to hell. <laughs> yeah. Th yeah. This is where. Okay. All right. So here I am here. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to reset this transformation here. Um, so here is my GoPro layer. And again, this, this will be what you're looking at. Um, on yours as well. Now, as you see, you see the green screen behind me has now taken the formation of the background layer. So this is how I do it. So first things first, we got to use that crop tool. Um, and, uh, and again, this is not going to be perfect because again, I'm, I'm, I'm usually standing at my DJ table versus um, at this desk. Um, but uh, smooth, appreciate you, brother. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use that alt and we're going to move this over here. And then we're going to move it over here. And again, the green screen is, is, is te terrible at best, but I'm just going to try to make it work just for yeah, what we're working, doing here. Dude. Looks good. And, and I'm going to take this layer here and now I'm just kind of chilling here. And now I'm, now I'm in the background. So like literally, as you see the sky, here we go is behind my hand now. And, and, and that's, and that's how you do it. Um, you, you crop where your green screen is. And then for me, I position the way if I were to be standing behind the DJ booth, which would probably be something along these lines here. And I mean, I mean, again, this is just an example, but as you see here, I'm now behind the DJ booth and I can DJ down here and it actually looks like I'm DJing on the table. Um, but this is essentially how the green screen works. Um, yeah. And in order to with do the chroma that, key. Yeah, with exactly. the chroma key. So I'm actually going to uh, remove that and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. So technically what I just did is I just cropped it so that only my green screen shows because technically if I don't have the green screen, you're going to see the speaker here and the, and the speaker will not disappear. Only the green screen will disappear. So the first thing you do is you go to your camera source, whether that's your GoPro, whether that's your DSLR, whether that's your webcam, it does not matter. You come over here, you right click and you click filters. You click add and then you add the chroma key. Now chroma key makes it very easy because you can just click green. Um, you can then uh, customize it if you want or you can even click custom. Uh, you don't need green. Green works the best, but again, you don't need green. You can have blue, you can have magenta. You can even have a custom color. Let's say you have a custom bed sheet that's like bright orange. You can actually go to the custom and actually customize that and it'll work the exact same way. But again, because I have a green screen, we're going to click green and we're going to click done. And that's literally it. Yeah. Um, Jay, make sure you talk about the importance of lights on the green screen. Very so, good. Very good point. Arctic. Um, yeah. The first things first is the green screen um, and the chroma key, uh, picks up a certain color green. And that is what all those customizations kind of do 
um, and help you out with. But the key thing is, is what, what Kid Arctic is talking about in the chat is, um, if you do not light the green screen properly, beyond yourself, mm -hmm. I'm just talking the green screen. The green screen technically will be multiple color greens. And the, and the only way I can explain that is, is, let's say this side of the green screen has a light much closer than this side over here. Um, they will technically be two different shades of green and the, and, and the green screen will not work as perfect as you'd like. That's so right. that's, they're, they're, that's, the, that's the first step in the green screen. The green screen itself must be lit perfectly for one. Evenly, yeah. Sorry, I should say that. Evenly. Yeah. Um, if it's not lit evenly, uh, your green screen technically will not work. And, and actually, you can actually see that. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse here. But, but right over here, um, I'll, I'll pick it up. Do yeah. you, you see how there's a little thing there? Pull um, it out that, from the crop a little bit, and you, you'll, you'll see it a little bit more. Yeah, see, check that out. You'll, you'll, you'll see, because this is not lit evenly, um, as you see here, as I move it over here to, to other, uh, other places, because that's not lit evenly, and again, this is just temporary, um, you will have those um, uh, marks in it. Um, and, and again, if, you, if you're actually looking at my video uh, with me and Epic here, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, you, you can see that there, there are some shadows. So the first thing is lighting the green screen. The green screen must be lit perfectly. The yes. second thing is lighting you. Um, and if you don't light yourself properly, you will have a shadow, um, which uh, you're kind of seeing already, which is kind of what that is, is, is you're seeing a shadow. Um, and again, that will take kind of a way uh, of you inside whatever scenario you're putting yourself in yeah. uh, for the fact of it's not lit properly. And again, it's going to look weird that you have a random shadow out on the lake. So um, it comes in two forms. The green screen, meaning behind you, must be lit evenly. Second thing is you must be lit just as evenly so that the green screen doesn't show shadow and neither do you. So, um, yeah. I and think then let me just chime in a little bit on that too, yep. is, uh, and, and Arctic actually said it, which is the point that I was going to make is that if you can flatten the, the sheet or the, like the green screen itself, as much as you can, like use clips, um, try to, try to like roll it around the stand that you have and like tape it down to make sure it's completely flat. Uh, that'll help a ton. Uh, but also the distance between you and, and the screen itself. So like, I understand that some D, like some of us have like really smaller rooms uh, or DJ studios or like, uh, you know, uh, situations, you know, are difficult for us to be in front of the green screen, like and a lot farther than usual. Uh, but hopefully if you can try to get it as far as possible. So like about five feet, six feet. Um, and, and don't worry about what's behind you because like Jay showed you, you can crop yourself out. So if there's anything stuck on the sides or the top or the bottom, um, you can crop it out. But as long as you're a bit farther away, so you're not casting your own shadow. And what that actually does is because you're lighting yourself and because you're lighting the green screen, you actually may get some like green spill onto yourself if you're too close um, to like to the green screen itself. So what's going to happen is, is your side of your face is going to have a little bit of fuzziness because you're casting some of that greenness onto you. Um, so like the further you are from the, from the green screen and yes, huge, huge point. Don't wear anything green, obviously. Uh, otherwise you're going to lose a torso. And, um, but yeah, those like, th these are some tips. Like if you really want to get into green screening, like there, it's obvious that there's a potential for you. The fact that you're, you're going to purchase some lighting uh, because that's the only way you'll get it like proper true green screen. Um, and, and like Jay said, two, two lights behind you, evenly facing the green screen on each side, and then one key light in front of you. And you can get a key light for like $20 on Amazon um, that you can clip onto like a post or your desk or something, as long as you're lighting your face. Because if you're lighting behind you, what's going to happen is the front of you is going to get super dark. And even though you have the green screen properly lit, you're not going to see yourself in front of it. It's going to look like you're completely out of the scene. Uh, so make sure you light yourself in front. And, and again, get, get creative with the layers. So I'm, I'm going to show you something else here. Um, what, this, this houseboat here, and again, when, when people see this, they always ask me, um, what am I, how I do this? Um, when I, like, if you see this, this is just one layer. So like my houseboat layer um, is, is that. And as you see, this is, again, that, that same scene that I've just put in, 
uh, I've just put the, 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 the houseboat in. And again, the water and sky are completely different. So it, the, the, this scene here is just a houseboat with some trees in the background. And as soon as I turn that water layer on, it makes it go alive. <laughs> need uh, money saying we need the, the Wilson. Um, we need Wilson on the, uh, I, can, I can show you Wilson here. I, di I didn't turn everything on here, but again, uh, I, got, I got really creative here. I, I put, the, uh, put the stick here. I put the raft. Oh, the raft <laughs> what up, Wilson? A little late. Um, and again, man, just you can get really, really creative. But, but again, that's essentially how you do the green screen. Again, it's really, really ghetto. But uh, in the setup I currently have, but um, that's that's the green screen process. I'm gonna I'm gonna tear this down. Give me a sec. <laughs> yeah. So like we, man, we pretty much covered uh, most of what we wanted. Like we wanted to talk about. Um, so I'm going to answer a few questions while Jay is tearing down his, uh, his green screen. So, uh, Chela soul gave us a question. He says, if I create my overlays, widgets, logos, and stream labs on my present laptop, will it be saved on my account for when I'm ready to transition over to a newer computer? Um, so your scenes will save and your sources potentially will save, but because you're using like local files, like images on your computer for like your overlay or, um, a GIF or, like anything of that sort where you're using something locally on the computer, that's obviously going to be, it's obviously not going to work on your new computer. You need to make sure you transfer all that stuff over and you may need to re-browse through the properties and like make sure it all fits. But for the most part, Streamlabs does save, uh, save your stuff into the cloud. So that's, you know, that's super helpful. Um, epic, especially epic. If, I, if, yeah. I something, if I can add something, if I can add something in there, What's up? Um, when I formatted my computer, um, I actually did not save um, anything and Streamlabs actually kept every single file um, in the cloud. I, oh. I actually did not need to load Amazing. anything, but here's the thing I will say. It's still better to save all of the pieces because it. although it did save in the cloud and I did have everything, um, I don't have those pieces anymore. So if I delete that scene, yeah. that's gone. So yeah, definitely and also there's a, there's, there's a little bit of compression, um, through the cloud as well. If you want like, you should probably load your, your original files back up in my opinion. I agree. Um, yeah. So how do you upload emotes on your Twitch? So yeah, uh, that's uh, Stoivo asked the question. Uh, you wiped oh, yeah. your SSD or reinstalled windows. <laughs> I actually, I did both. Um, I, I, I did Smart. both. And again, it, it stream labs does save in the cloud, but again, if you do not save the physical pieces, you will not be able to have them. Um, you will not be able to have them again. So I'd recommend having a, like I, for me, I have a, a, a folder on my desktop called Streamlabs files within the Streamlabs file. I have all my different shows and within all of those folders with the different shows, I have all of the, the, uh, the creative graphics and all that stuff that goes with those. So I still right. recommend um, I'm really saving everything. Um, although, uh, although it does save, it's still better to just, just have it locally. Okay. So how do you add a second camera with an iPhone? Um, so I've seen this. So basically OBS live, not Streamlabs, but OBS live has an application, um, on the app store. And uh, to be honest with you, like I would, I would completely shy away from trying to do that. Um, especially for DJs cause DJs use low latency. Like we need everything to be on point, no delay, um, and you don't have that kind of control when you're using that wireless app for your phone. Um, personally, I wouldn't do it. Uh, if you want to add a sep separate camera, I would either use a USB webcam uh, or another capture card, cam link, uh, some sort of Elgato capture card. Um, but I would definitely shy away from the iPhone. That's for people that probably do like podcasts or play video games maybe. But at the same time, even though with video games, you probably want low latency, I would stay away. <clears throat> from anything wireless like that the more stuff that's plugged in the better in my opinion um while live and, where are you uh, oh sorry were, were you about to go on to another one or, or no you i think on? i no. think uh how do you add a second camera i think we we answered two questions real, real quick. oh yeah perfect yeah um while live where are you watching your viewer comments um, multiple ways to do that. Um, I, I, I see some people, they literally pull up their phone um, and watch the exact stream they're doing on their phone. Keep in mind, if you don't have a very good internet connection, I don't recommend that because that yeah. will affect your overall upload speed. 
So, um, but the, the simple, simplest way is on your phone and rewatch your stream live. Um, I like to use the Twitch app um, on my, uh, on a tablet I use. And within the Twitch uh, app, there's something called stream manager, which allows you to see viewer comments and uh, the activity feed where you get to see if people are cheering bits, um, are rating you, are subscribing to you. So that's, that's what I recommend. The, the yep. stream manager itself, um, it, for me, has always been the, um, the, the best thing. And one, one thing I can say is I've used an iPad and, um, and an Android tablet. And to be honest, the iPad doesn't do a great job. And not to knock Apple itself, but the iPad actually does a terrible job on updating um, updating it. And, and I literally have to keep pushing see more below where my Android tablet does not. Uh, yes, that is the same Twitch app, um, yes. not a separate application. It is the same Twitch app. Um, yeah. Again, you just click yourself. And when, when it comes down, there's like a settings tab and all this other stuff. There's a go live tab. There's something called stream manager. And when you go there, uh, you can see your activity feed and your chat window live. Um, okay. Another question. Can you touch on the GoPro setup? Okay. So I'll show you really good. Well, I don't have to show you, but, um, I have, I'm using a GoPro actually for this zoom call. Um, and basically what I do is I have a GoPro. If you have a GoPro hero four, actually I can show you one cause I have one sitting here. If you have a GoPro hero four, uh, this guy right here on the side, it's actually built in. There's a USB power connector and a mini HDMI uh, connector. So basically on Amazon, you can buy both of these cables if you need to, um, for like less than like 10 bucks each. And basically what you need is a capture card though, cause this won't work without it. Um, even though GoPro, like my hero eight, I have a hero eight, the newer version, even though it has like streaming abilities, um, through Wi-Fi, it's, it, it won't work for this, for what you're trying to achieve with Twitch and DJing. Um, you need a capture card. So what I do is I plug in the HDMI cable into a capture card, which uh, Jay showed us, which is the HD 60 is the one I have, but you can buy a cam link or you can uh, test the waters and buy one from Amazon for 30, 40 bucks. Um, and then you plug that capture card into your MacBook or your streaming um, computer, which would usually be USB. And then once you have your USB, the capture card itself has like a brain, a mini CPU in it, which allows <clears throat> you to choose it as a source um, for your camera. I, I, Storm asked a question of how do you add a GoPro into your feed um, when plugging it in via USB and it opens up via the GoPro quick app. Yeah. Um, I, I have an idea, Storm. Um, part window of your capture. sources is a window capture or display yeah. capture. Now, I don't know if it's going to be perfectly uh, in time with your music. I can't comment on that. I've never tried it, mm -hmm. but it is something that you can do. Um, again, you will add a source and you will capture the window, um, that it is displaying. And again, I know it has the cool GoPro app, but remember you can hold the, um, the alt and actually resize it to just the window, um, and add it in again. I don't know if it's going to be perfectly in time. I have a feeling it's actually not going to be in time, yeah. but test it out and let me know. Cause I, I, I would love to know that as well. But again, yeah, um, as, as we've said, we, we prefer that everyone plugs everything in. If you can try to stay away from anything wireless. Um, we all know this, right. As DJs in terms of sound and sound engineering and design. Um, yeah. So like, yeah, exactly. So like, man, I think honestly, the answer for everyone, everyone's question regarding a camera is find yourself a capture card. And, and like D Smooth said, he uses a cheap one from Amazon. Uh, good luck. I, I, I'm sure they do work. I'm sure I've heard horror stories that some of them don't. Um, but if you have a little bit of money on the side to put towards an Elgato, that those things are, they're pro ready, man. And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't, there's no way I can knock it because it works amazing. Seeing, uh, seeing DJ Vibes said he tried it with the NDI and it doesn't work. Um, yeah. the NDI does work. Um, it just depends on what the source is you're using it and what you're going into. Um, I know a ton of video DJs who use the, uh, the NDI for music videos and it works perfectly for them. Um, it's just, it's just trial and error. Um, yeah. storm. See you later, brother. Appreciate you, later, you stopping storm. by. 
Um, uh, okay, so do you need a capture card to use as an uh, an iPhone as a wired camera? So that's that's funny because that so some iPhones have like a lightning adapter to HDMI. It's not very common, but you know, with that theory, it is potentially possible. Um, but in order for you to do that, you would have to have your camera open. So the camera will show like, you know, when you open up your iPhone camera and it shows like slow-mo video photo, and it shows like the button and all that, um, you would have to like crop that out. But the thing about iPhone cameras is, is when you're look, looking at some something or yourself, it has that box to like try to find your face. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me see if I can recreate it. So like if you put it, so like, hold on, wait, wrong way. So it's like trying to find, see that box is trying to find my face. Like that's going to constantly happen um, while you plug in a phone into a capture card. So like, I don't think it's ideal in my opinion. There, there's um, also, I was going to say, there's also the way of not using Streamlabs. So this doesn't work in Streamlabs, but it works in OBS Studio where right. OBS Studio, I believe has an app, which is like almost $20 in the app store. That's right. And it allows you to use your phone um, and it connects via your OBS studio and, and it mm -hmm. does work, but I, I, yeah, I, so I mentioned that, but again, Oh, like sorry. I, said, I, I didn't, I didn't. No, no, you're fine. And, and, and it's, I just, like I said, again, like I'd stay away from wireless, like, like, but I, I know, I, I know a ton of people that, that do do it. But again, like I said, if you're want to use Streamlabs OBS, it's not going to work. You got to use OBS studio. I know a ton yeah. of people that use it and, and it works fine, but just, just keep that in mind. Yeah. And so we got one, uh, one question left. How do you upload emotes to your, Oh, sorry. We, we answered that one already. Right. Um, I, well, I, I, I would like to go into, to, to Twitch and, and go into yeah, that. Uh, let's, if, let's do that. We have uh we have one question left, but by all means, if you need to ask anything, please do that now. Uh, but, uh, Jay, Jay's going to share the screen. He's going to show us how to upload emoticons, but I just want to get emojis. the, I want to, I want to get the, um, how many emojis per. Yeah. Per so I think because I, I really, I really want to emphasize points. on this. Yeah. Um, because I get a ton of questions about how to, you know, how do I get all the, how, how do you get all five emotes and, um, no one touches on this. And I really, I, I want to make a video on this as well because it, uh, it is extremely important. So, um, I'm going to share this right now. Mm -hmm. So while he loads that up, basically what happens is, is you get one emoji for every tier of your subscription list for your subscribers. But if you have like a certain amount of subscribers, um, you you're allowed to get like more emoji slots. That's why you see like some DJs like you know Scratch, obviously, Baby You, like D Smooth, all these guys. Jay even uh, he has more emojis than me. Uh, it's because he's got more subscribers, so he it allows you to add more emoji slots. Um, but you do get one once you become an affiliate. You do get one default, so um, that'll help build your like following, obviously, right? If you like add an emoji. Um, but yeah, Jay's going to show it right now. Epic. You, you can see this right now. The, yeah, it looks the affiliates. good. So again, when you, when you become an affiliate, after you do all the signing up stuff, um, you get up to five and what no one talks about, which I really want to emphasize today. And I'm probably, I think I'm going to make a video after this as well is it based on sub points, not subscribers. It's based on sub points. For one subscription equals one sub point. And keep in mind, there are three tiers. For tier one, one sub point equals one point. Uh, one subscriber at tier one equals one sub point. Uh, one subscriber at tier two is two sub points. And one subscriber at tier three is three sub points. Mm -hmm. um, the sub points is what matters to get you all of the emotes. What I highly recommend is as soon as you want to get and open up all five emote slots, you got to go hard and legit get as many people to sign up in one yeah. month. Do like because a contest or like a giveaway, like something that's a very small, like, you know, it doesn't have to be very big, but like, man, like a $50 out of your pocket might go a long way just to get a bunch of subscribes. And the reason why I, I say this is because it's based on a 30 day period. Meaning if I subscribe to Epic um, for, for this month and Epic doesn't get 50 points at the end of the month. If I don't resubscribe his sub points go down. And although you, once you unlock the emote slot, it's yours. And it's just that you have to work extra hard now to really get 50 people. And again, 
if you're starting out and you really want all those five remote slots, it's hard to get 50 people to subscribe to you. Like I, I like I'm, I've been streaming for since April. I've been an affiliate since May. I only have like 89 subscribers, which to some people that they're like, holy crap, that's a lot to some people. That's nothing. Like I, I like I'm sure smooth probably has two to 300 people a month. Mm-hmm. Um, but but keep in mind that you, if you really want to maximize your emote slots, which I really recommend because that's what sets your channel apart. People I've literally seen, they don't even need to like you. They just need to like your emotes and they will pay you to use your emotes in other people's slots. And that's what no one talks about. If I like Epic's emote, I can use that. And if I pay him the $7 a month, I can use his emote in another chat for 30 anyway. days. So what I really recommend is if you decide to go and you want all five emote slots, you must, I really, really recommend, what am I, what is is going on here? There we go. I I really, really recommend you go hard for one month and get as many subscriptions as possible to maximize your emote slots. Because like I said, people will subscribe to you to use your emotes. They don't even need to like you. They don't even need to pull up to your channel. I'm just telling you, go hard, get as many um, emotes as possible. Like Epic said, um, try to do a contest, but you need people to pull up uh, for your emotes. Like that is 1000% uh, what needs to happen. Here. Yeah. And Arte makes a great point. He should be a part of this. He's making great points the whole time is that keep it relevant to your, your shows. Like, like we're all we're all separate DJs. If we're all we were if we were all the same thing, doing the same thing, like saying the same thing, like it obviously this wouldn't be happening. So Jay's got new rhythm Mondays and he's got rhythm up and he's got he just released a new emoji that just came out, right? What what was it? What's what oh uh, that that is for um for cheers, which which that's we, right. We can get into that as well. That's um, right. So like just so it's a great point is that keep your emoji relevant to your show and to your following and to the people that you're interacting with on a weekly basis or a daily basis, and and just make sure you're hammering that in because like he's got a fromage squad, he's got cheese whiz, um, uh, dubs I, pond dubs a new new right. new rhythm that's up. That's right. And then again, I have something else in tier two and I have something else in tier three. And I know a lot of people are like, I don't think anyone's going to pay me 10 bucks a month or even $33 a month to subscribe. But what I can not emphasize enough is, is you must have emotes in there because there will be that one person who does that. And you do not want them to pay you $33 as crazy as that sounds. And then they don't even get anything. Mm-hmm. So I highly recommend it. Um, I, I, I've only ever had two people subscribe to tier three. And again, I got, I got the KD in there. I mean, it, which is again, nothing special, but. But have, it's new. It's, re, it's relatable to you and it's unique yes. to you, right? So I, I highly, highly recommend um, you, you get that going uh, like extremely quick. Um, because yeah. again, as soon as people start uh, showing up and and wanting to uh, and wanting to pay you, um, there will be um, there will be uh, people that want to do that. You want to get you want to maximize uh, what they can uh, what they can do. Um, yeah. In so uh, the I think the last question was uh, the the emotes uh, the emotes themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? I'm gonna delete. Um, crap i don't even want to delete because it takes so long to read yeah 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 so don't um, worry about that but like um maybe actually i can show it because i don't have as many slots as you do um you know what i i know there's a way there's a there, uh, there's another way i can show you guys okay um, so while you I, do that i'm going to answer the uh, another question that's pulled in um do you feel the followers care about all this extra stuff with the music you're playing and and what jay said earlier in the in the in the webinar is that you know twitch is a specific platform um, an interactive platform, an engagement platform where people are spending time out of their day to watch you similar to how they would spend their night out to come see you DJ. Um, and I know that's a bit of a different thing, but because you're in front of a camera, I think that there's a responsibility for you to engage with the people that are, are watching you on Twitch. Um, and I, and I've seen it firsthand where I started off pretty simple where, um, my following would go to other channels who had a crazier kind of setup. Um, I'm in the middle. Like I don't want my stuff to be too crazy, but I do believe it's very important to have some of this stuff on here um, to keep your crowd one engaged, to keep them coming back. 
And um, yeah, like, yeah, I think to be honest, it's important. I don't know if Jay, if you want to touch on that, but I, and I so, know why you're setting up all your stuff because I feel like you do believe it's important. No, no. I, I think it's, I think it's extremely important, man, because yeah. again, in order to get to five emote slots, you need people to subscribe to you in order to get instant emote uploads. You need people to subscribe to you and do more, more channels. If you want to go to partner, which again is better money for you, you need, you need this. This is mm -hmm. extremely, extremely key. And like I tell everybody, I could honestly care less about partner but I want more emote slots. And as an affiliate, you only get five. There is no more. I mean, maybe there's more in the future, but as of right now, there is no more emote slots. Five is the max until you hit partner. Then you can get, I think up to a hundred or something crazy like that. So, um, although uh, again, I don't want to delete uh, my emotes because emotes, uh, they have to get approved. Um, so I, I still want to show you about, uh, about this. So there are three sizes of emotes you need. One is 112 by 112, one is 56 by 56, and one is uh, 28 by 28. And although this is for um, a badge reward, um, it, the emote slot works the exact same way. So what I want to do is I have a, a, a bunch of stuff right here that I'm going to upload right now. Um, and, and, shout out, uh, and shout out our buddy DJ Vicious. I'm going to literally, I have uh, three emotes for him. Oh, so, it's too good. Oh, wait, keep in mind, sorry, that these three sizes are the same emote. Yes. And, and, and the reason yeah. being uh, th that there are three sizes is because people can watch on multiple devices, one being a laptop or a TV, one being a tablet or a iPad, and one being the phone. So you need right. all three sizes and they all need to be a decent quality so that you can see them in all. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, vicious uh, one, uh, 112 emote and I'm just going to drag it right in there. <laughs> And then, it po and then it populates. And, and I did this for when it was uh, DJ Vicious's birthday. Um, and now he's never going to forget this. Um, the second one would be the 56. So I drag that in there. Well, he'll remember it on his next birthday. Yeah. And then, and, then, and then the last one is the 28. And again, although keep in mind that this is for badge rewards, the emote slots work the exact same way. But this is how you, you go about doing that. Um, if you have a designer, I'm sure if you give them all three of these uh, sizes, it, they'll take care of it for you. If uh, you don't have a designer, there's Canva, and I, I use something called PicMonkey. And again, it allows you to resize certain things. You can make certain emotes. Um, and again, it'll allow you to resize them, save them, and then upload them. Um, I really recommend not using your logo. I know that's the first thing that DJs think of is like, yo, I'm going to up, I'm going to upload my logo as cool as that is. It's just, it's not feasible uh, it, for the fact of um, people are not going to pull up to someone else's chat and use your logo. Yeah, so I to, highly yes, recommend exactly. something creative. And again, like I use Cheese Whiz, I use Katie, I use Rhythm Up, I use Dubs, whatever the case. Something that works for you. Even cool sayings. I mean, like um, DJ Franz and has a bunch of them called Framily and Vibes and all yeah. this other stuff. And then people yeah, actually Agile use, has Sound a Big Tingdom or yeah. like Scratch has a couple. Bubba Khan has a couple. Yeah, like Scratch has a, a Scratchy Yoki and Big Tune and, and stuff like that. I highly highly recommend um you you go with stuff like that uh because it will just uh bring more people uh more people to you so yeah um, um jay man yeah i think i think we've reached the end um although we didn't cover everything i think this is a great great video as we're going on three hours now of a very well-rounded uh twitch um uh, what twitch review streaming yeah. review <laughs> There is right. still a ton more stuff that we could cover, um, but this is just a general um, information session. Uh, so I hope everyone enjoyed this. Um, if there is any more questions, please feel free to hit me or Epic up after, uh, after the fact. Um, if you're not already following me or Epic, um, we would appreciate a follow on Twitch. Um, not mandatory by any means, but- No, not at all. Um, we would really appreciate the follow because again, we are all trying to build the community on Twitch and I really, really recommend even not even just following us following everyone that was in this chat today. Cause again, 
um, you really need the uh, the following, and you really need the uh, the support from all the DJs to get us to the next level. And um, I heard D Money uh, really uh, speak on this today, and I never really thought about this. Is just like in games, uh, which is again what which is Twitch is really made for. Um, it's meant for. Um, in order to win a game, there's always um, a certain thing you got to reach. There's always criteria you got to reach. There's always a goal you have to reach. And, and just like a video game, because that's what Twitch was originally based off of, it's, these are just small goals that you can do within Twitch, right? To become affiliate, you have certain criteria you have to meet. When you meet it, you get it, right? So it's just like you don't need everything right away. You don't need five emotes right away. You just need you, sm- like slow and steady wins the race. The first thing to do is become an affiliate. Mm-hmm. The second thing to do is once you become an affiliate, start building your emotes, right? Once you have all five emotes, uh, uh, right now is, wh- is where I'm at, um, is I want instant emote uploads. Meaning if I wanted to delete one right now, I could get it instantly uploaded versus yeah. right now. Uh, sometimes uh, I-, I got lucky and, and my, my latest one only took 12 hours. D money goes waited- through like a approval process. Yeah, exactly. It goes under review, meaning someone has to look at your emote to make sure it's okay. Um, I really highly recommend you set goals for yourself and, and, and just reach them. As D money said, one took nine days. What does that mean? That means D money just did what I did. He dragged all of them in and then literally push submit. And then nine days later, that emote was able to go on his channel. That is a long time. So yeah. one, I recommend you know the emotes you want. And again, sometimes it takes a while. So set the goals, small goals and, and go from there. So again, the first goal is to become an affiliate. The second goal after you become an affiliate is to, I would say, unlock all five emote slots. The next goal after that is to get instant emote uploads. And then the next step after that, I think, is partner. And then partner opens up a whole new set of goals as well. So yeah. um, that, that's the best part about Twitch is it's not just uh, up in the air. There, it, there is goals and criteria set, and you can just set these small goals for yourself to achieve what you need to achieve. Mm-hmm. But, but bottom line is respect the platform. The Twitch platform is about interaction. Keep the interaction up, and I promise you, promise you, you will do decent. Yeah, yeah. Respect the platform and pay it forward. Help your other DJs, man. Like, you know, I, I've seen it firsthand, and I, and I you know, I've not – I just, I just help each other, I'm telling you, because we're all in this together. We're all, like – going through this new phase where we're DJing on a different platform, um, not in real life and, and online. So I'm telling you, man, help your other DJs. Like as much as a DJ is like probably one of the best DJs in the world. And I can name so many of those, um, you know, we all need help in trying to, you know, figure this out. And, and, and help is not always a dollar value. Although I really no. recommend to, to literally subscribe every month. If you can afford it, it's only $7 subscribe. And I'm not just saying to me, I'm saying to your favorite DJs or the DJs you appreciate, mm-hmm. the least you can do is subscribe at $7 a month. But if you can't even do that, which is okay, I'm not judging at all. The least you can do is pull up to the stream and help a DJ's average viewers. Because yeah. in order to reach partner, in order to reach affiliate, you need certain amount of average viewers. And believe me, just you pulling up into a stream and bumping that stream from 14 viewers to 15 viewers, legit extremely huge, helps so um uh, and, and as fusion said 75 and what he's talking about is to become a partner on top of streaming for a certain amount of days having a certain amount of followers um you need an average of 75 viewers throughout a, a 30-day period meaning you could have um 12 streams because i think that's the minimum you need at least 12 streams in a month but let's say you, you killed 11 streams but one stream you, you only did 40 You're not making part for that month. So like I said, you do not need to spend money on all these DJs, although I I highly recommend it because, again, like I said, it's $7. It's it's the equivalent to buying a DJ a drink at at the bar, uh, just like we all would anyways. But the least form you could do is just pull up and become part of the chat and become part of, of the viewership. And believe me, you will help DJs out so much by doing that. And it costs nothing. It costs, costs nothing. A, costs costs time. a little bit of time. Yeah, that's it. Um, we appreciate you guys, man. Honestly, for everyone who's still here, um, 
for the long run. I know it was quite a long show, but I told you three hours. Epic. Yeah, you did tell me three hours, bro. Uh, But we, we, I hope we answered your questions. And if obviously, like Jay said, I'm going to say it one more time. If you have more hit us up on Instagram, um, more than happy to help out. Um, Thank you for joining us. We appreciate uh, you guys. Jay, I appreciate you, man. Uh, Thank (laughs) you for this. No problem, brother. No problem. All right, guys, we're out. Talk to you guys later. Peace.